the Rap Round Table. Yes, sir. Episode 98 of the most dangerous, most controversial, most inspirational, and still most influential at every level of podcast. You podcast. Talk about New it. New York's number one podcast yeah. for hip hop is back on deck. It is the Rap Round Table. It's your boy Jarv here alongside the the Rap Snob. What up, what up? Alongside Dini the Balance. Dini the Force be with you. The homie Mace still on an injured reserve list. We hope to get him back soon. He'll catch you up on everything that's going on with him eventually. Yes. It's not our business to talk about it. It is yes. entirely his business to talk about it. If he, in fact, tells you what's going on. But then at the moment, he's on an injured reserve list. It is what it is. You can find a rap round table at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and of course Twitter. The beat you hear in the background is brought to you by Sincere Beats. He makes beats. Follow, follow, me. follow him on Instagram at Sincere Beats. Yes. Hit him in the DM if you want to buy some of these beats. Who he got a, he got a whole catalog of, of different vibes and sounds that you could tap into. Sounds Absolutely. right. You know what I'm saying? Episode 100 is on the way. Uh, New York Bias Three is episode 100 oh, coming it. this June. Make sure you lock in with New York Bias 3, a.k.a. episode 100. Uh, what, what else we got to say? Oh, you go, you know, roundtablemerch.com. Get you it. one of these. Speaking Hit us on the cash app if you're feeling generous, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And as always, as always, as always, where is it at? You know what I mean? We are. We are. Tonight's entertainment. So, sit the raps now. What's the word, bro? I'm chilling, man. Yo, I need you to say something for me one more time. We, we are the most influential. Shout out to two T's out there, man. Mm-hmm. I see you. Shout out. out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what up, yeah, man? You know what I mean? Niggas do their homework. They watch film on the rap round table <laughs> before they go and do their own thing. Yeah, you know what I mean? And then I got I gotta Get say up on our stage and I hear our bars. You know what I mean? Up on the stage. All Come right. On. I see to you. You. And it's Good like I, I said it on Twitter to him. I said, you chose the wrong team. If you wanted to do this shit and you was move, I don't know if he's moving on from, from Brian. But if, if you wanted to do a whole hour platform, nigga, we was right here. Yeah, I we, at the game and your shit would have been way more lit. It does feel like they're a little like more separated now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like, I, there's a little separation there. Maybe the rap radar pod ain't a thing anymore. I don't know. Mm, maybe they did it professionally. They didn't, they didn't do it domestically. But my thing is, we were right here. Your show would have been way more lit than having them other two niggas next to you. No disrespect to them niggas. They, they <laughs> earned their spot to be next yeah, to two T's. Of course. Facts. But if you want to entertain some niggas with a podcast, hello. You, you hello. Watch the film. Him and uh, what's the other one? Rob Markman. The yeah. rotation round table. <laughs> the rotation. <laughs> Where they at? Nigga, what, is, what did that even mean? You know what I'm saying? Nigga, yeah. that shit just died, and then he's back to doing YouTube reactions Y'all on Twitter. Around? You know That's what I mean? <laughs> That's what y'all doing over there? All I'm saying is, if you if if you want to have an entertaining pod, everybody want to have, everybody want to be the rap round table. This everybody want to have multiple voices and it. personalities. <laughs> they want to create the chemistry and the vibe that is completely organic over here. If you want the rap round table, just... Ask for the rap, bro. Ask for it, man. You know what man. I mean? Good bread. And, and I'm here to tell y'all, like, th- this type of relationship, it doesn't happen overnight. It's a you fact. Know what I mean, this like, it's organic. Like, I, I see some some pods out there trying to, you know what I mean, trying to get on their jokey joke, you know, the little funny vibes mm. and, like, forcing their the, the little laughter and shit. That shit, it, it, it's, it's not working for y'all, man. It's not natural. Do what comes natural to you. Cosmetic, and synthetic. If, and, if, and if what comes natural to y'all is being boring, then just be that. Just be boring. You know what <laughs> be mean? the best boring show be you can be. Be who yeah. you are. You know what I mean? There's niggas who like that shit. That's a fact. Facts. That's a fact. Some motherfuckers don't want to see niggas laughing. Some people want to be entertained. <laughs> and then you got the, the other side of the spectrum where niggas just giggle too fucking much. The Midwest Giggle Boys. You know what I mean? They, they laugh too much. Now I don't even Is real hip hop ever coming don't, back? Don't, 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 don't go into crazy Make me one of those niggas bro Just Is real hip hop ever gonna come back? Hey, sometime soon They laugh themselves off In the, the stage, cold bro. Like what the fuck Yo You know what I mean What the fuck Like what happened You know what I mean where they at? Shout out to they, them boys, They lost their leading and just said, fuck it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shit like that. I'm just saying, like, y'all niggas is trying to replicate the energy. You can't do do what comes natural to you. Word, pause. Word to sin. You know what I mean? Because it ain't working. Be you, man. It ain't working out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, Some it's people- real crazy. Everybody, everybody got these panels, son. That shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. That shit. I'm not even bothered by it, but it's, it's a entertaining from a, from a distance to watch. It's flattering, honestly. We're flattered. We are. But you know what I mean? Give us our flowers. No. At least. Us? At least. Give us the flowers? <laughs> At least, Hell no, man. we'll never get that. They'll tell us personally before they say it on the air. You know what I mean? It's coming. 
The, flower, now, the flowers will come. No, we just, we snatching the shits off of niggas. Facts. You know what I mean? How much will we pay? We Fuck out of here. You know what I mean? This is facts. We snatch our props. That's it. We don't wait till they're given. That's it. Anyway, another thing, you know, quick story. Shout out to everybody who has like allergies and shit like that. Oh, I'm, a, I'm an allergy sufferer. You know what I mean? I get it really bad. Pause. But it's like, I was driving here to the studio and I panicked. OD. I'm going to tell you why. There was a street sweeper coming up Eastern Parkway, and both of my windows is down. I'm blasting music. Nigga, I never rolled windows Damn up because I panic because I'm like, all I see is just the dust, and it just looks like everything is piling to me now. So I'm struggling to roll the window up, and I'm like, yo, if you suffer from allergies like me, bro, street sweepers are your worst enemy, all right? You know what I mean? That shit scared the fuck. I never, yo, you would have thought I was about to have an accident, dude. Like, how fast? Like, <laughs> this, this is some of the Break. biggest pollen I've seen in my life. You should look like little dandelion it's balls, like bro. Snowflakes, bro. <laughs> shit is crazy. <laughs> Shit me, bro. Nasty but work, man. Let's get into this pod, man. Enough for the yes, pleasant yes. Hit the like button. We need three to four hundred on every one of these videos. Hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe. We got seventeen k. We walking down twenty k. Make sure you do the necessary. But Apple Music, yeah. Maybe I'm wrong, it. sin. But I get, I get the sense that Ebro has something to do with this list. You know, what I mean, I could uh, be wrong. Uh, I mean, <laughs> so I, I, I've listened to their morning show a couple times. He. He claims he was not in those rooms. He claims. Making these decisions. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much I believe him. I don't believe him at all. <laughs> at all. Because the way he was defending the shit has me begging the question. But they put this list out. And it's not a, a rap list, but there are rap albums within the list. So, of course, rap nerds like ourselves, we decided yeah, we're going to compile that's our it. own list. And at the top of that list, the, the best rap album, according to Apple Music, by proxy of their top 100 albums, is... Yeah. Good Kid, Mad City. Mm. Huh? <laughs> the number two best rap album of all time, according to Apple Music. Come on now. It's The Blueprint. Wow. Huh? You got to scroll all the way down. <laughs> wow. To number we, nine. We doing this, this to, already? To find Illmatic. That's where we're going already? So there's, yes. So they're saying, <laughs> they're saying that there's Good. eight albums or seven albums, seven albums, six, pardon me. In between Illmatic and the Blueprint, mm. what? Bro, we no can't, you can't ease us into this pause. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm upset that I wasn't able to go on Amazon and buy a cape <laughs> for this episode <laughs> because I really wanted to be a, a complete jerk. Shout out to Apple Music. Salute to them. Oh, doing oh, what's necessary. Oh, now it's, oh now, wow. it's now it's now it's shout out to Apple Music. It should have been number one. Thank you, Ebro. I didn't think wow. that was going. I didn't think that was going that way. Salute to Thank you, you Ebro. That's crazy. Throw that diamond up one time. Wow. Blueprint. Come man. on, man. Blueprint. Get the fuck out of here. Blueprint. Get the entire fuck out wow. of here, bro. Blueprint. This list is ass. Throw the diamond up. Send you Leroy, the I know you're no, watching. Top to bottom, this list is ass, bro. The true is throw, throw the diamond up. <laughs> Yo, somebody stop this man. Ladies, if you win, it's just grinding the baseline. The, this is what you gotta. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do with me? <laughs> Shit me. I mean, this is it is a major deal, though. This is a rap song. Come on, man. Number the two. The blueprint major. is seven albums better than. Illmatic? Ebro, I really, I really hope you didn't have anything to do with this. Shout out, game. Ebro. I'm going to have to meet you outside of the Hot 97 radio. You got to shout out your doppelgangers. Niggas swear you, Ebro. Some if you're not Ebro, you DJ SNS. F oh, <laughs> Effin. Effin. Oh, Effin yeah, is Effin. the one. My fault. My fault. Sorry, DJ <laughs> I've never, I've never gotten Ebro Drink before. Champs. I've definitely gotten Effin. I'll be reading them comments. They, they, they the white beard. <laughs> um, uh, Ebro, e Ebro's is getting there, oh, but so not probably. quite. Um... But yeah, man, let's get to this list. This list is ass. Now I'm not. Uh, again, we're not. We're not going to go through the entirety of the list. Uh, you know, it, it it's been, you know, picked apart and, and analyzed in the space already. So we're not going to do all that. But we are going to talk about a, a, a couple of uh, felonious placements. Felonious. <laughs> I'm weak. Um, going there with it. F first and foremost. Right now, let, let, let's get this out of the way. The the album, this was a top 100 albums of all time. Mm -hmm. And obviously there, there was going to be some rap hip hop albums in there, but it wasn't a hip hop list. But mm -hmm. again, we extracted all of the rap albums to see where they landed compared to each other. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Relative to each other. We, uh, also, Lauren Hill ended up winning <laughs> the number one best album of all time. Mm -hmm. Not just rap, but best album period of all time miseducation with the miseducation of lauren hill now 
I don't know if we're going to get into that because, again, we are the rap round table, and we've talked about this at, the, at this platform before. It's not really a rap album. It's a hip hop album. Not. It's a it's it's yeah it's it's, it's hip hop soul album. Yeah, hip hop soul. Yeah, maybe similar to Mary J. Blige, just with a little bit more rapping because mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. Lauren could rap. She could rap her Definitely. ass off. So. If we don't count the Lauryn Hill album as a full rap album, then that means the closest rap album to the number one spot was Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Mad City at number seven. Mm-hmm. How do you I feel am, about that? I, I am the number one, as you all know, <laughs> Kendrick Stan at this table. That you are. But they got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> 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 the best rap album of all time? Word. All time. Word? That's how you feel it, bro? Above Illmatic? You asking Apple Music? What the mm. fuck are you talking That's about? Above, 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 you know what I mean? Wu Tang? <laughs> above uh, Biggie? Above Jay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Above Nas? Mm-hmm. Your man's. That's, that's my dude. And again, like, it, I, I've been talking about it. He, he, I think he's done enough for me personally. For him to creep into my personal top five, but he's not jumping all the way to number one above Nas and all of them. He's smoking you know? on top five. That's, he said that. that's crazy. So what you he said, I mean? he, he did say that. Um, also, the fact that this album, so, some acts had two albums on there, mm-hmm. very few. Uh, for this to be on here and to Pimp a Butterfly not to be on here at all, I don't know. I don't I'm know how I feel that. about that. I'm, I'm a little cool, mad. At I'm cool that. with it, but I, but I, but I understand it because Kendrick hasn't been a, 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 around for as long as like a. A Stevie Wonder or something. Right, like that. Of course. You know I mean, so I get it. Now let's get to this number two spot. Mm-hmm. The Blueprint is the second yeah. best <laughs> rap album of all time. Yes. <laughs> According to Apple Music. <laughs> let, 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 let me go through what they said it's better than and what it's above. Mm-hmm. The Chronic. Okay. The Low End Theory. All right. Ready to die. It takes a nation of millions to hold us back. Enter the Wu Tang. And of course, Illmatic, which comes in at a number nine on the rap album. Crazy. Criminal. Get this and get, bro, get this whole list. Get Ebro. Get, get, uh, who, who's that other guy? Ebro? Uh, uh, Zane Lowe. Get him the fuck out of here, too. Whoever else was involved and whoever voted on this list, get them all the fuck out of here. This is going to be an early lawn segment because y'all motherfuckers <laughs> got to get off my lawn. Illmatic at number nine, bro. Six whole spots below the blueprint. Mm. I'm I'm tight, bro. I'm I, I, somebody else gotta gotta talk about this. Uh, <laughs> I got my takes, but this you, is this you is and hot, I have already dominated. This, this I is <laughs> hot horseshit. Hot horseshit. Yeah. Hot horseshit. Mm. Bro. Do you need to balance? You see, you see what's going on here. Mm, I do. Good kid number one, the blueprint number two. Then you scroll down and you see Illmatic at number nine. Like, what? what, what how do you feel about that? This, this list is blasphemy, bro. Like, you know what list is bad when you have albums that you love on it and you still are like hell fucking no. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I love Astro World. I I've been <laughs> I've been to the show. It's amazing. But a top tw- a top twenty hip hop out top twenty one, mm-hmm. my bad twenty one hip hop album all time. This is criminal, my guy. Um, I don't see Marshall anybody Mathis before before Get Rich. Is I trying? I don't see anybody in this rap in the rap list specifically who has two 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 albums in in the rap list. And I was scrolling through. I don't know if that any- was more that was more R and B. I think R&B. Beyonce had two. I think Stevie had two. He had yeah. Intervisions in the other joint. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Beyonce Car- had two. Yeah, Stevie she had, two. She had Lemonade and the, um, the, the self titled joint. Proceed, yeah. Dini. Yeah, voice. like I mean, granted, the the twenty that are there are sensational albums. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love, I love, I love the last few albums that my boy Tyler the Creator made. Mm-hmm. But to have Flower Boy on top twenty hip hop albums all Was it time? called me if you get lost better than Flower Boy? Uh, yes. Okay. Shit, I, I keep it low key. I might fuck around and take ego over Flower Boy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like this is mm-hmm. this is crazy to me. Crazy. Granted, good music. You're arguing like good to great. Um, Drake in the top eleven mm. for take care. Like just just wild to me. Granted, nothing but hits on the joint. So I get I get the cultural relevance. Okay. Yo, I mean, ready to die at six. Like, wow. Like, 
Stakes is high at 14. Wow, bro. No, it's That's uh, crazy, uh, bro. Three feet high and ride. Three feet high and ride, my fault. Three feet high and ride, um, the joint with the cover of the Daisy joint. Yeah. Bro, I didn't I didn't really Look. appreciate that album the way I was supposed to until I went to that event. Yeah. And that album definitely moved up the ranks of my albums. NWA at, at 15 just feels wrong. Let, let, let's talk about something real quick now that it's come to mind. I feel like this list is naturally... <laughs> Leaning more towards more modern, modern albums, day. yeah. Uh, especially more streaming era. They got, they have to get some streaming era albums in there Obviously, because it's Apple Music. They want course, to, you know, what I mean, business. they they want they want to, you know, bolster their their, you know, the era of, you know, uh-huh. streaming on Apple Music. You know what I mean? Um, there are some clear bug doubts to me. Like I, I never felt like equipment I was better than. Um, Fucking all eyes on me. I, I've never felt that. You felt that? Quamina is an amazing it's album. It's great album. That's that and here's the, the dilemma we are. All these albums really are great albums. Yeah. But it's it's the positions are nuts. Ill, you're fucking Illmatic at nine. That's a top three hip hop album, bro. The, the, and let's talk about this. And that's not even my favorite Nas album. Bro, the, the blueprint doesn't even happen without Illmatic. Let's talk about that. <laughs> I mean, if we do that, then we'll be here. The Illma- Illmatic is the original blueprint. It is, it is. It did set let's the tone. Let's, what are we doing? Let's, let's what are we doing? It did set the tone. What does the blueprint Dude. have to do with Illmatic? What do you mean? What does the blueprint have to do with Illmatic? I'm asking you. It said it. It. It was. I'm telling. Illmatic. We've said this before. Illmatic was the first super producer album. Right, but, the, but why are you singling out the blueprint? <laughs> this, it's That's sin. mad niggas did that. It's shit. sin. No, nah, I understand <laughs> that, but. The blueprint is one of them. All right, all right. I'm, I'm another one. Because on look, because look, the cro- the cro- the chronic was only Dr. Dre. Mm-hmm. Low end theory was only Tribe, uh, Tribe or Q Tip. Right. You know what I mean. Don't scroll over the Kanye album. You well, got ready to you die. Got ready to, no life well, Kanye death was crazy. Kanye was mostly Kanye. Um, ready to die. It, uh, yo, ready to no die doesn't happen to without Illmatic either. All right. So now now we cook it with some grease. Until the Wu Tang just RZA. You know what I mean. It takes a nation, nation of millions to hold us back. I, I think that was all the bomb squad. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Beastie Boys, but no. I see division. <laughs> no. I see division, Sam. I see. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put the gun down for a second. You know what I mean? Here, here's what I'll say you know, about this here. You know, Dini, you know, Dini don't be saying the thing, right? It be, it, it's always left to me to have to say the, the thing. You know what I mean? So I'm going to say, walk over your You know what I mean? <laughs> Good kid, Mad City. Oh, here blu- we go. Here we are. All right. The blueprint. I know what this is. My beauty with Dr. Stefanis. Low end theory. It he, takes a nation of millions to hold us back. He's just happy. 36 to be. chambers. Uh uh uh. Take care. Paul's boutique. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect, but three feet high and rising. The Marshall Mathers LP. And of course. Flower Boy, as well as Astro World. I already know who's part of the decision making with these yeah. albums. Yeah, white people. They were cherished by these are the whites. I'm sorry. Yeah, the white people love all of these fucking albums. Mm, but you celebrating how Blueprint is better than Illmatic by this because it brings me joy. <laughs> love the Blueprint. I see how that goes. I agree with the whites about the blueprint. Yeah. I love, listen, yeah. I love the blueprint. As long as it works too. for you, let me get my fuck Trump it, on. Right? Let me get my dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when, it come, when it comes to the blueprint, any kind of blueprint praise is good by me. Okay? But I gotta Therefore, be fair. I gotta be fair. These albums are supported by the white people who are heads in the culture who love a specific thing. They love the black struggle, they love the 90s aesthetic. And they love rave music. And of course, they love LGBTQ adjacent oh, yeah. mm-hmm. when, we, when it comes to Tyler, Tyler. the Creator. Mm-hmm. So you, you you add all those elements together. And of course, they, def- they, they they're always going to stand by Eminem. You put those elements together and you have the 20 rap albums or 21, part of me, that made this list. Yeah. Because this list is not... A, a hardcore it rap has list. No infamous. This is a mainstream list. Notice, yeah, you got. It kind of has to be though, yeah. Based on like it's Apple yeah. Music. Well, yeah. not just because it's Apple Music, but based on the fact, and, and I think Ebro spoke to this too. Like, it had when choosing the albums, it had to be albums that 
you know, reached across right. an Cultural aisle. Significance. You know right. what I mean? So it reaches across races with the whites. Mm-hmm. Extreme worthy. Sales. And at the same time, like we always joke about when other niggas make lists, you got to have certain albums on the list because if they're not there, then you look crazy. So Illmatic had to be somewhere. Yeah. Illmatic didn't, let's say, sell or quote, stream the way it was written was. But it's Illmatic. We There's no is. list is valid without Illmatic. Facts. All joking aside, Illmatic being nine is kind of invalidates the list. It kind of speaks to the mainstream nature of the list because it's like, there's no way, no one, no disrespect to Public Enemy. They're, they're legends in their own right. No question. But no one talks about it, it takes a million, a nation of millions to hold us back in the same breath that they, they mentioned Illmatic. This is a fact. Ready to die? Uh, this is a fact, Sam. I'm not, well, let, let, this is a fact, Sam. Let Critical acclaim let me, let me put. Let me push back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let me there's, know. No, there's definitely, again, that, that early 90s era, it, the, the, there's a big separation between like, 90 and 94 huge you know what i mean and so there's a lot of people there's a, a, a lot of older heads possibly some you know older heads that are a little older than me uh that feel like anything before illmatic anything before 94 or maybe even 92 uh doesn't get the flowers that they that that that, that, that those albums deserve mm. you know what i mean and i think it takes a nation of millions to hold us back it's one of those those albums that some people would say it, it it's a seminal album it's it's a it's a classic it's incredibly important to the culture but because it was before like this you know cut off in the timeline mm-hmm. of like 92 to 94 that it doesn't get looked at in the same in the same way mm. you know what i mean so but let's be clear, it's, it's, it's not fucking with Illmatic, bro. Come on. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna listen to Come it over Illmatic. Let's, 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 let's be clear, like you know what I mean. Illmatic and Ready to Die, you could have a conversation, but the answer is Illmatic. Low End Theory is probably the only album that you can really make the argument about Illmatic, as Illmatic far as like, and, and you might not sound crazy. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is a top five all time album, but not for the reasons that Ill, Apple Music chose it. The Chronic, I could get, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Even if the you know, some people get mad. They get mad at us, but you know, it didn't. It didn't age as gracefully as some of the other works I on still, this list. I still have but it still look, above it. It's still yeah. Doggy Style is the better album. It is what it is. You know what I mean? So when I look at this list, it's just like I feel like you got to say because rap is is is, is such a touchy subject. Mm. You got to say top mainstream albums. Because I'm sure there's R&B albums that niggas never heard that go way crazy than some of the shit they chose. Facts. Or country. I don't know if country albums make that list, but country albums or contemporary. Yeah, that's, that's some kinda, acoustic shit, pop shit. She's crazy. Country. I actually, well. Pop country. Well, yeah. But uh, I was looking through the list. I saw, saw like no country albums. Like if we're mad at these picks. That's the biggest and genre. The, the placement uh, of these rap albums, I can imagine a country fan. Like, R&B no... was disrespected too, though. No, some missing a lot. That's of, what like, I mean. Legendary singers, man. That's what I mean. But like, if you say if this is an album music that's based on stream quality, is Barry White gonna make this list? Is Teddy Pendergrass that's gonna not... make this list? Like all, all the all the true R and B goats and icons Sam are gonna make Kerr. this list. The soul icons, they're gonna make this list. You know what I'm saying? Nice. So, I I think that you got it. We know list culture is his own thing now in 2024. Mm-hmm. And you got to list culture creates click media and you got to get the clicks. But I feel like you need to start like Sin always tells me sometimes you got to spell shit out for niggas. Mm. You got to say top whatever, whatever mainstream albums, top crossover albums, because this list right here is kind of irresponsible. If I'm 15 and I don't know shit about rap, you telling me that Illmatic is the ninth best album of all time Crazy. and it's right above Equimini. I know to respect that Equimini, but Equimini is not that close to Illmatic. Absolutely it's not. Really not. <laughs> Only two spots in front of... The Beastie Boys have an all-time body of work. The fuck out. No disrespect to the Beastie Boys. But 12 is crazy. Uh, crazy. Paul's Boutique. I'm going to... Okay. That's uh, crazy. Again. um, (laughs) There's definitely a set. No, there's there's a segment. Again, uh, like, and I want to be fair about this because... um, And I want to, you know, I I know I said like 98 that... um, you know, the Public Enemy album was was 88. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fear of a Black Planet was 1990. I just want to make sure I say that. Cover your bases. Yeah, you know what I mean? They, they started shooting at me. <laughs> um, but but still, I mean, the point stands because it's like 1990 is that, that like that cutoff point because the 80s get shit. I mean, there's no Run DMC on here. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have Paul's Boutique, but you don't have no Run DMC. That's a little crazy. You know what I mean? 
the 80s do get shit on uh, i feel like it, they, they don't get their proper why due that? but uh why is that um i don't know that's a deeper conversation than than i think we're, we're ready to have right now okay but um like if you're gonna have 80s representation with the beastie boys and paul's boutique where's run dmc at bro facts krs1 come on no BDB? chris yeah no, no, no krs1 no no, no ll no ll yeah. L- <laughs> bro no rock him no, no eric being rock him that is insane yeah. that's what i'm saying this list is irresponsible i feel like when it comes to rap as a genre you also you always have to try to be as responsible as you can be because this genre has so much layers and you know I hate people hate to hear the phrase but let's be clear the rap round table was the first one to tell you about it there's a lot of subgenres in rap mm-hmm. but still within those subgenres you have to be responsible about who and what you're talking about when you're making these lists because this list is invalid without some of these bodies of work yeah. because rap like these some of these albums that you have on the list like sending I gave Sin a hard time earlier <laughs> But the but the but the the blueprint does stand on the shoulders of an Illmatic because there is no blueprint without right. Illmatic, without there's, there's no Illmatic without the works of a Kane and a Rock Kim, so to speak. And when I say like Illmatic was the original blueprint, I mean, but then it's 50 50 you know half of it slander just to piss Jarv off. I respect it. <laughs> but but the the other half is. Um, they they both had a very similar vibe in, in the way that they were put together. It was like it was a very organic, like, yo, let me call this producer, let me have this producer, and all working together in the studio together to catch lightning in a bottle. Mm-hmm. Both albums came about in that very in, in that same way. You know what I mean? Um, it just so happens that Ill, Illmatic did it, did it first. You know what I mean? And really set the trend for you know the Biggies and the Jays and. You know everybody else that came after that. Yeah, I mean, I, with Illmatic. <laughs> Jump in, Dean. I, don't, I mean, you know, again, I'm trying not to dominate it's, the conversation, it's, it's but so I just many, feel like it's, it's so many things that I'm just like, I want to argue, but I, I'm like Kanye at four for um dark, beautiful, dark twisted fantasy. I'm like that album is fucking amazing. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But is it better than Illmatic? You don't know nope. think it's crazy that Tupac is all the way at 13? Like, All Eyes On Me? You got all these albums is above. And Take the, Care is above All Eyes On Me. Oh, Machiavelli, Seven Day Theory. Come on, bro. I'm, I'm surprised they went with All Eyes On Me instead of... Um, uh, what was the one before that? All Eyes On um, Machiavelli, Seven Day Theory? No, 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 no. before that. Um, Are you still down? I, I, no, no, that wasn't that. Shit. Why did I just catch a bank on um, I know that the, the comment section will happen. But yeah. Republic Enemy to me, Thirty Six Chambers is a top five rap album. Like to me, if if you tell you telling me that me against the world, me against the world. That's why we need a Mace. Get off the fucking bench, <laughs> Mace. <laughs> Pull up, Mace. You know we not Pac fans. I fuck with Pac. That don't mean we. Yeah. That don't mean yeah. we hate Pac. That's just not our <laughs> bad. And to be clear, I went to my phone, but it, before I even typed it in, I that was like, that me against been, the world. That could have been on that list, but too. The, but but me against yeah, me against the world. I feel like. Has always kind of been the the critical darling yeah. of Tupac's discography. So to see All Eyes on Me on the list instead of Me Against the World is a little surprising. Right. Um, but also I'm not I'm not too mad at it because like All Eyes on Me I feel like was over like over time I feel like that album was more influential and like that's the album that Pac fans really really go back to to like point point out how Pac was a goat. You know what I mean? That's what that that's that's what solidified Pac and his GOAT status was coming off of me against the world, coming out of jail, and then dropping All Eyes on Me, the double album. It you know what I mean? I'm I'm not I'm surprised, but I'm I'm not mad at it. And you know what? I, I feel like when they put this list together, I don't know about the other genres. But context and lore is very important to what rap albums mean when you when you start talking about their importance mm-hmm. as far as list placement. You just talked about it with Pac, like the lore and the context of the time mean it's kind of states what the album means. Same thing with Illmatic. That's why a lot of niggas put Illmatic so high, or in some cases, number one, because yeah, of man. what it meant to the time, how it how it kind of really changed everything. Same thing with the chronic. Yeah. I'm not mad if you put the current top five all the time. I'll never be mad at that. But the blueprint, how, you know, all right. 
Not even reasonable though. I'll That's take the, I'll take the diamond down for a second. What did the blueprint do as far as like what? I'm not I'm not questioning. I know what it did, but I'm just saying, is it the genre shifting album to be top five? Did it change that? Did it change things that much? See that, and this is where I, that's I get, the question I'm asking. Th this is where I get stuck on the criteria because uh, Ebro went down the criteria again. Ed, he he claims he he didn't have much of a say on on the list, and he wasn't in those rooms making mm -hmm. decisions and votes. But he was he sure was caping for the list and and really like they signed you know checks, breaking bro. breaking down. Yeah, I I, I get it, gotcha, but breaking gosh. down all the criteria and everything. Um, and so like based on his criteria and. It, it, you know, being a genre-defining moment. Mm -hmm. I love the blueprint, but was it really, as you asked, a genre-defining moment? Did it shift the culture? I mean, it literally dropped on the day that New York stood still, and I feel like the free world still ran out and bought the album. I mean, that's that's crazy, that's, bro. Uh, that's, cr that's a that's, point. That's crazy. What I'll say is, like, the sample music for that era, especially the Rockefeller sound, even through Dipset, like the Chipmunk Funk, it played a it played it played a big role in what rap sounded like for that particular era, like like that that space. But Jada Kiss wasn't out here as an example making a blueprint. Loso yeah, right. when, when Fabulous dropped, he wasn't making a blueprint. Right. So it was like, was it like it went a, straight to the Neptune? Right. I, I'll say that Kanye, as much as niggas don't say it, Kanye. And what he did sonically with his debut and shit like that kind of benefited from what the blueprint was mm -hmm. as far as critical acclaim goes. So you can make that argument. Exactly. Then he started really to sound. venture off. He, he was doing shit with Alicia Keys right. and Common and shit like that. All right, so maybe the more I talk and about it, I could I could talk myself into believing it. how important the blueprint and, was. And it's the precursor to like, like prior to all this stuff that happened this month, hip-hop's right. greatest battle. You know what I'm saying? It's literally the, the opening. So, yeah. But, but also, let's be clear about this. Because um, some people say out there that uh Kanye West had a hand in saving Jay-Z's career <laughs> nigga or bolstering Jay-Z's career man look. it was the the blueprint happened Kanye was a part of it and then Kanye took that ball and ran with it that's a fact Jay-Z made Kanye's career the more I think about that situation Come on, the man. more I, the more I think that that was like, so funny bro, bro is just a Kanye fan Jay hater and no not a Jay hater but he showed up to the J party at the blueprint. He wasn't there. Mm. He wasn't there before mm. the blueprint. So when he said that shit, he thought it was valid because he didn't understand what, what the fuck Dynasty meant. Reasonable. What Volume 3 did. Volume what Volume one. 2 did. Mm. What Volume, like, like you, ha you really have to be locked in with Jay-Z to understand that each album is a, is a different point in, point in time or point a point of reference for where Jay-Z is as an artist and a person. It's really a lot of steps that happened. There you go. Shit. So when he said that shit, I, I don't think he meant any malice. He just didn't do the knowledge. You know what I mean? So when it, cause niggas be like, oh, volume two didn't age well and this and that. And it's like, bro, the album wasn't meant to age well. It was for <laughs> that <laughs> time. It was definitely it was not for meant that to time, age well. man. Volume three, the same thing. It was not meant to age well. It was supposed to do it, it was supposed to do numbers in real time yeah. and go on to the next thing. Definitely did. He's holding it in his timeless music bag until the blueprint. That's a fact. Yeah. Volume, uh, not volume one, uh, reasonable stood the test of time because most times artists, they debut albums is, is an amalgamation of who they are as a person up until that moment. Yeah. And it usually hits different from the rest of their shit because they're not rich yet. You know what I mean? So usually, if you go back, a lot of the, look up, Nas is another example. First album hit different from everything else because he's not rich yet. And it's, and it's a story that he told based on everything he experienced up until that point. I'm just trying to show you a lot like niggas be exposing themselves as people who got to certain parties late then they try to retrofit their opinions based on what they think mm. the signings are not understanding that living in the moment is just as important as listening to the music you have to be there to experience it you know what i mean you gotta what watch a, the whole series of course dog. of course i love i love good kid Master. it's a great album great album but i feel like this is dangerous overrated like i feel like they're running the risk of turning people off from kendrick granted i i get why he's number one he just had he just won the biggest rap beef Argu arguably ever first so first I could Pulitzer for a rap album right. I can I can see why he's number one still on the but, charts for like what two years or some shit good kid mad city's really that as far as hip-hop goes is it really I, that, that? Is, that is a point that it's, I mean it's it's, it's, it's the standing the test of time I I, I hate to argue this shit but that's why I, what it is what it is that's why you know I started my, my takes with, with with the white people white people have when, when you start talking about chart data it's not us bro it's the whites yeah it's the Asians, the Hispanics. 
Hey, it goes beyond. It's, it's, it's hey. fine. It's fine. It goes beyond. They can relate to, sorry, man. They found a hip hop they can relate to. You were there before. You were there early, so you don't count. <laughs> <laughs> From the beginning, this album stands the test of time because it crossed over in a major way. And I can, based on what you just said about it, two years on the chart, whatever the fuck. Crazy, bro. Based on what Ebro said, I can see why it's number one. But ten I'm, years, my fault. Not two years. Ten years. Ten years. But I'm sorry. Jeez. This album is. This album ain't that. Like I can scroll down to album number four. My beautiful dark twisted fantasy is better the better project. body of her. Yes. What are we talking about here? Several of these projects I, are better body. It of is sin. Don't do that. Sin, sin, sin. I know that's your man, but be reasonable. I, I just listened to Good Kid, Master. Good I did too. Man. Fire album. It's, it, it's, it's better than, better than my good, beautiful dark twisted than, fantasy. Yeah. I'm not gonna go say. Back. I'm not gonna look. There, there's several albums that Into I. The that there's several albums that I would say I ain't gonna use them like better than are on even on an even wow. playing field. I think there's several That's albums that are on crazy. an even playing field. You know what I mean? Uh, I think Sin. I think Kendrick has two of them. I think my beautiful dog wow, Twisted Fantasy bro. is there. That's and crazy, I'll go, bro. you know, I'll go back and you know, Illmatic, Reasonable Doubt, even the Blueprint. Like first of all. You first, can first, put all first, of those first, albums first, like first of yes. all. micro mm -hmm. millimeters away from each other. Okay. My beautiful dog to some fantasy clears good kid massive. I don't know if it clears, it clears bro. It's not clear. It, clears, it doesn't bro. clear, bro. It clears. It doesn't clear, bro. You yo, I well, you know look I'm, at look I'm at dragging track water to this conversation. Great Sincere music. told me that I got you, Dini. Sincere told me that my beautiful dog to some fantasy was apex of hip hop culture at the time right. of his that was, release. And that shift. was in 2010. The, the album that shifted the, the culture. of hip hop. And this album it's came out four years later. <laughs> Two years. My, even worse. It's right there. Right. It was. It came, it came out after. So you say that. I made that no statement way, in 2010. This album came out in 2012. That's crazy. Right? Either 2011 or 2012. Let me make sure. Like, I don't want somebody... to say the album has great moments. Yes. The moments on... On Somebody my beautiful dogs, just, just, just oh my, it's the moments, man. Um, two pimp, two pimp butterfly came out in 2015. You don't even love good kid how you love two pimp butterfly. That is bro. true. It's a fact. It was me and Mace usually the ones defending that one. 20, uh, section 80 was 2011. What? Me and Mace usually the ones that defend the good kid. Usually defend the pimp butterfly. I, I I think they're both equally great. Which one you think is better? Well, you see I would have I would I would I would have to lean to to pimp butterfly. It's better than good kid. Yeah. Of course he would believe that. Damn. That's why I'm like, how you about this, bro? No, see, no. Cause it, <laughs> there's no, there's no the arguing wow. with this nigga about this. On, you asked you ask me my did, opinion, I, I gave it to you, bro. Hey, yo, and, I, I, and I highly I disagree with it. <laughs> yo, I'm, I'm getting I hungry. I need some pizza. I just stated it. You know what I mean? This is getting crazy. Yo, chat, what's good? What y'all having for dinner, chat? I'm over here. Here's my thing. I think, at least with my company here at the table, I think... Good Kid, Mass City, aesthetically, sonically, uh, production-wise, um, vibe-wise, fits the aesthetic of what y'all like more. You know what's funny? I think to, this... to Pimp a Butterfly, like the, the, the tempo went down, the BPMs went down, you didn't have the 808s, you didn't have the triplet hi-hats, you know what I mean? And, and look, I'm not. I'm not it's a not, fan. That's not that. Hey, I'm he, not a fan. Yo, Dini, I'm not a fan. Dini, you see what he does? Do he always runs to the 808s and the triple hi hats. Y'all love that shit. That don't mean it's that we can't differentiate, bro. It don't mean that we can't love that shit. We, we love a good regular snare and a regular. To, to Pimper Butterfly was a lot more too. live instrumentation, a lot more jazzy. There was like poetry. It had involved. nothing to do with what niggas like. And, and it didn't even make the list. Immediately turns y'all off. I know y'all. I've been around y'all enough. It has some it had joints. Shit. It has some it joints. Was more, it Obviously, was it turned mad niggas off. It was more it's conscious. It's not on this list. Y'all motherfuckers don't like conscious. It's not music. on the list. They don't like it either. <laughs> <laughs> the white folks. They don't like it either. They love that shit. Well, not enough to put it on the list. Word. He could a hundred albums. Because that you know, shit didn't make the list. He could have been the only, only been rapper. Around, nigga. Like, he could have been the only rapper nigga with two albums. He's the only nigga with a deluxe album Come on his shit. Gang. He, he ain't been around like. Not even 15 years. I like, wasn't gonna I like Dan both better of those than, albums. Dan, my favorite album on his catalog. Let's be clear. I'm going to Good mean, Kid. Good Kid's the better album. To each yeah. their own. Go but ahead, Dan, Sam. I mean, to. Talk your shit. <laughs> Look, <laughs> no, 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 no. But you're right, yo, no, no, you right, crazy, though. though. There's, there's, something, there's something you've said in the past, and you're completely right. Uh, Dan was a 
direct reaction to to Pimp a Butterfly mm-hmm. and the direction that it went in, and realizing that it might have alienated some people. So, like four years later, he finally gives you my flower. Ken, Ken, Kendrick, <laughs> Kendrick, you know what I mean? Just Kendrick ha, has to make an album that that appeals more to the masses, the masses, oh, yeah. and the public. You know what I mean? And get get some hits. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's a part of the game. I I, I understand that. You know what I mean? But. Right after that, he came back with Mr. Morale. So I'm, I'm honestly, I'm really interested to see what his next project is going to be like. Is it, is it going to be that constant back and forth? Mm-hmm. Good Kid, Mass City had like that, that, that's the sonic mm-hmm. elements of what the youth love, loved at the time, still yeah. love. You know what I mean? Storytelling and shit. Like um, that good. no, no, but I mean production wise, oh, like sonic, sonic. Yeah, you know what I mean? Well, like the, the sounds is a Gemini. Everything. There's that duality. <laughs> you know what I mean? For, for there's damn and there's not damn, there's uh, 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 Butterfly. Typical Butterfly and Mr. Morale, then there's Good Kid and there's Damn. Yeah, there's yeah. the duality of a man, you know what I mean? I think I think he's going to try again. I think he's going to do what he tried to do with Mr. Morale I hope not. and find that happy medium between creative freedom and radio friendliness. That's where I'm at with it. I think we got a taste of it, pause, with this, with this beef. Cause there's the euphorias, yeah. There's the meet the, the grams. There's the not like, like us. us. There's yeah. the six sixteen in, in LA. A, in LA. Mm-hmm. It's been a little sprinkling of of every side of Kendrick throughout those records. So I think he's gonna keep trying until he makes his masterpiece. I don't think Kendrick believes he's made he's made his masterpiece yet. That's why he keeps trying different shit. Mm. You know dark, what I mean? Dark song here, yeah. party record here, trying to find which one's gonna really move the masses, I guess, you know. But but you know, we've buried the lead long enough. You know, this is all about to say the rap's not right now. It ain't about me, it's not about you. <laughs> it's not even about Walton the Cut. Good Kid Mad City is the number one rap album on this list. You scroll all the way down to number nine. Illmatic <laughs> is number nine on this list. Yeesh. Hip hop has from coast to coast. Country the country even have said Illmatic is the rap Bible. Has Good Kid Mad City supplanted Illmatic as the rap Bible? Mm-hmm. The album that if you if you introduce the aliens who come to invade our planet, <laughs> this is the rap album you need to listen to in order to get familiar with the culture. Has Good Kid Mad City replaced it? As has is Good Kid Mad City the, the New Testament? Mm-hmm. The new Bible? I think the King we actually, James version. I think <laughs> Old Testament. Uh, uh, first of all, no. Okay. But <laughs> second, I think uh, sometime as first far back all, as I feel first, like first, maybe first. two years ago, uh, we were already talking about how Good Kid, Mad City might be the modern day Illmatic yeah. to this generation. First, 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 first. Um, and look, you know what I mean. Fast forward to now, you got. Good Kid, Mad City being placed as the best rap album on this Apple list. Um, I, I'm not. I have feelings about it. Let, um, let us know. Talk about it. Because look, so the, I think the reason why I'm both such a big Nas and Kendrick Lamar fan is because, like, I see the similarities between them. Um, they're, they're both very much uh, MCs and artists that are. Uh, very skilled lyrically, but they 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 want to make sure that their their skill and talent and musicality is for something. You know what I mean? For something bigger, for something social, for something. You know what I mean? That 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 will better people. Like if, if they listen to it, if the audience listens to it, that the audience will come out maybe a better person or think about things differently than they than they came in thinking. Right. Um, I also see the similarities between the fact that like they're, they're both kind of observers. They, they both came from um, a neighborhood and an environment that they could have felt trapped in. But somehow like they they didn't fall into the, the traps of their environment and they were more so observers and came out as like you know, almost like journalists telling you what was going on in, in those hoods. Um, so I, I, I see like the lineage from like an Illmatic to a Good Kid Mad City. Do I think Good Kid Mad City 
is a a, a, a new Illmatic or, or I, I would say it, it might be like a modern version of Illmatic or at least like what it represents. Do I think it's like eight spots better than Illmatic? That's a little bit wild. You know what I mean? And I also see the similarity between like with 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 Nas, it was it, Illmatic was held as his best album for so long, and then all of a sudden one day people were like, "Oh no, nah, have you gone back to it was Vin? It was Vin. He was really fucking. Mm -hmm. He was spitting on that shit. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And the production was crazy, and the so, you know what I mean? It took some time for people to like really come around to it was written. And now there's a debate between which one is better, Illmatic or It Was Written. You know what I mean? Like, that's a bona fide debate today. Mm -hmm. um, I think we, we we see that happening a lot with Kendrick as well. You know what I mean? There's always a, there, there, there's a constant debate between which one's the better album, Good Kid, Mass City, or To Pimp a Butterfly. And there'll be people that'll be like, yo, you wilding the fuck out, putting To Pimp a Butterfly in the same circle as Good Kid, Mass City. <laughs> okay um, Just the same way Some people would be like Yo you're bugging out Putting It was written Next to Illmatic You know what I mean So there's a lot of Similarities there So I see the lineage I see The the, the common thread um, Has Good Kid Mad but City Supplanted <laughs> Illmatic As the rap bible Why don't you give me A straight answer <laughs> You know what I mean Like what's going on here B so, so you did all of that I had to get that Off his chest like, I, did, I did it, it was, these were thoughts that were ruminating for a while. I dig it. Um, What's that? <laughs> <laughs> What's that, brother? Are you gonna, also, are you gonna answer no, the question I'm, or what? I okay. I I think I think there might be. Now, can't you give me a straight answer I, anymore? No, I, I think that I think that. Yeah. Yo, Diddy, since hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I think that there might be like a conscious effort to. To actually have that happen, you know what I mean? To have like a new what do you mean by that? Best rap album crown <laughs> from a modern MC, from a modern artist, because like mm -hmm. there's been all this talk about how you know what I mean? Maybe hip hop has mm -hmm. you know uh, ran its course, you know what I mean? Maybe it's fallen off, maybe it is dying off, you know what I mean? And we can't have that happen. Like we can't just have hip hop be like this. The, the, the sound that you pick up when you want to, you know, make a quick buck. song and, and, yeah. and a quick buck and, 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 and jump on the charts and then just, like, drop it off when you don't need it anymore. Like, it has to continue being a viable art form, not just a piece of commerce. Now, can't you give you know me a straight answer anymore? <laughs> Which one is better? So, I, I do think that, that there is a conscious effort to making Good Kid Mad City. What's that, brother? The new Illmatic. And, right. and throwing Illmatic down the list, all mm -hmm. the way down to the ninth spot on mm -hmm. a hip-hop list. Mm -hmm. Um... Because Yo, well, he's still talking, you know. Yo. We answered the question. Yeah, I did. I just answered the question. I it's, think there's a conscious effort to make good kid Matt City. I'm asking you, think. you, sincere the rap snob. To me, no. Oh, okay. Now we got somewhere. Yes. Thank you. I thought you were asking like. Oh, no, we asking the you. The, no. You asking me? I'm not, the rap snob. I'm not. I'm not putting good kid Matt City above okay. Illmatic. You're crazy. Okay. So, do you need your balance? Now that we've gotten that out of the <laughs> pause. Um, where are we at? Is Good Kid, Mad City, there? No. Um, but I do believe this. I do believe once every, you know, generation or so, there is an album that kind of defines the time. Mm -hmm. Like someone basically came out and spoke to what's going on at the very moment in the culture when it needed to be heard to a lot of people who needed to hear it. And I feel like Illmatic has been that album for like forever. This might be the second closest thing we have to it. You get what I'm saying? And um, Good Kid. Is it as good as Illmatic to me? No. Does it spawn as many classic moments as it was as Illmatic? No. You know what I'm saying? It's just a great body of work with a, with a dude that basically was a hip-hop journalist and, and gave you the sign of the way Hove said, um, giving niggas the ghetto news, like you said on Renegade. Mm -hmm. yeah, I give you, I'm saying give you the news. It's up to you what you want to do with it. I think he's, he was been the his best. ghetto point of view. There you go. He's been the best nigga to give you that. And it was it was sonically dope. It was lyrically dope. It didn't, it didn't lack in any way. And that's been the best body of work that we had to define the times. I'm sure in 2030, somebody will drop something that will define the times or, or in the future. But right now, that has been the album that has defined the time 
perfectly for that many people the way Illmatic did. I think that is the album. That wow, do you need course. record time? He got straight to the point. You I'm know what I mean? Sink, brother. To see the politician <laughs> over here <laughs> tap dancing this shit. You know, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to, you know. Anyway. I don't want to offend the political connection. Here's what I'll say. I think I won't say that Good Kid Mad City replaced Illmatic as the rap Bible. But, but I will say it is it is a great addition to said rap Bible. Bingo. It is the New Testament. I'll put it to you like that. You know what I mean? There's some changes from the Old Testament Facts. to the New Testament, but the but the crux, the story of it all is the same thing, right? I think that Good Kid Mad City is a spiritual successor to Illmatic mm. for a, the new generation. 2.0. M- much like I talked about a couple weeks ago, or maybe last week it was, I don't remember. Where, you know, we took Chris Love saying hip hop is dead. And I said, hip hop is not dead. It just goes through different evolutions. And we age out of the program, you know? You had the niggas in the 80s who were young. They got old, became parents, became grandparents. Niggas in the 90s. That hip hop in the 80s is not the hip hop that's the 90s and the Wu Tang and the boot camps and the niggas. Nah, that's not the same shit. In the early aughts, same thing. What we loved, Especially us, what we love, it's not the shit that the niggas in the South love. Mm. A whole new evolution. Then you got this era right now. It's another evolution of hip hop. Like we might not like this shit, or every previous generation or iteration does not like the shit, but it's hip hop. I think that when Good Kid Mad City showed up in 2012, it 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 was the album of the first person perspective of the black person at that time in their life that was painting a picture of how the culture or whatever version of the culture it was impacted him as a man as an artist as a nigga in the street from a big city in the ghetto that's what Illmatic was to me Mm -hmm. and I think that Good Kid Mad City represents that storytelling that picture painting lyricism great beat selection and a young hungry artist who had a story to tell development so I think that Good Kid if there was an album that belongs in that conversation of Illmatic, that. it's Good Kid, Mad City, and that's where the conversation stops. No question. Oh, but when I said that, you took Mad Long a really it. long way to no, get no, 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 even, no, no, even, no, be, be, before, before this segment, right? I said that there's certain albums that are um, even. Well, you also said Tip of Butterfly is better than Good Kid, so you, it's, it. it's hard for me to listen to you. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. You know what I mean? When you say that, it's like. Teachers you know only. What's that? I mean, <laughs> no way. <laughs> What's that, brother? What do you mean by that? It's not. It, look, it, it, what do you it's mean not, by that? No, no, it's not. It's not. Sin. The rap round table. Well, here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy to argue a nigga's opinion, but like I'm arguing it. No, no, <laughs> it's not. It's, not. It's, it's 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 not as influential. To remember, butterflies. Everything it was written was not as you know good. I mean? Kid, Mad as a follow up. He he made commercially, it. yo, still, in terms of the yo, Dini, sound of it, Dini still fighting. He made fighting. it was written on the third album. <laughs> Damn, it, it was written. Talk about it. Say, oh, in, ter- in, in, in terms of like the of everything. everything. No, in, in, in terms of uh, of like the the space that it filled in his discography. Yes. Like yeah. What, what what the purpose of it yes. was? Yeah. Damn. Damn yeah, should have been the follow up. Clo- but but damn is closer to it was written in terms of that nature of it. Mm-hmm. That's but the, it's not. It's, it, but it's not. Down. But it's not as good as to Pimp a Butterfly, wow. and nobody argues. What's good about it? Damn, it's not as good. No, as nobody. Argues, Butterfly. No, it's not. <laughs> no kill it's shit. Not. <laughs> um, and nobody argues Good Kid, Mad City, or Damn. They argue that's Good true. Kid, Mad City, and to Pimp a Butterfly. Who's that's nobody? the argument. Are you right? The that's head, that's but, true. Let's be clear. Let's cap. be clear. The cloth niggas <laughs> argue that. Don't say nobody. The niggas, the heads, the heads, the heads argue that. The general public, damn, should be on this list. Could have been. Nah. Nah? All right. Dragging it? <laughs> a little bit. Before, right. But I will ask one question, though. If there is a, a rapper who deserved two albums, do you think it would be Kendrick Lamar? And I'd actually uh, say anything, Joff. With Good Kid, Mass City, and Spit Butterfly? Yeah, probably. It's a tough one. It is. That's, I'm, I'm like, ugh. I don't know if there's two. Yeah, I mean, it could. Nah, it could be Hova Reasonable. Look, look, it, it could be Hova Reasonable. It could be a bunch of niggas. It could be Hova Reasonable. It could be Nas. It could be Nas. Back to back. It was written Illmatic. Yeah. You know what I mean? The Magic Series. The, the yeah. KDZ Series. KD3. They all live. There's a lot. Magic 1, 2. Yeah. There's a lot. 
but ba- but based based on the like sort of criteria for this Pop. list, I think facts. It, it, I think it would be Kendrick or Pop. Yeah. Okay. With that being said, it's the next installment, but the answer is always going to be Illmatic. But I will grant him the, the the grace of saying, yeah, he belongs in that conversation. Good Kid, Bad City is, in fact, the New Testament. New but Decay. we got to move on. We don't talk about this enough. I think I, I like how we, we kind of broke down the list as well. Like, you know, as opposed to just being outraged or whatever. Like, we really chopped it up. Okay, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Safari, somebody we almost never. T- this might be the first time we mentioned <laughs> Safari on a rap round table. Yeah. But he said something that was interesting to me. Safari says that the albums from the year 2000 until 2015 are better than the music that's currently going on right now. He said that was the best era in his opinion. My question is, did Safari tip his hand as the new age old head? Because you know what? I've been tap dancing around being the old nigga for a minute, but I've embraced it. You know, I turned 40 in a few months. I'm old, my nigga. You know what I mean? Same. Are we witnessing a new era of the old head with Safari making this comment about his era being more popular than the current era since here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think I think every era is going to get to that point eventually. You know what I mean? Like we we've got I I've, I've been I've been and y'all are getting there. <laughs> and I think <laughs> Safari is realizing that yeah, like and, and the, this is this is my problem with certain artists getting to a certain age and then feeling like they have to keep up with the Joneses in terms of making young sounding music, making music that's lit or vibey. Like, just own up to the fact that, bro, you're you're 35, 40 years old. You know what I mean? And you, you don't have to keep up with those sounds. You know what I mean? Because like it or not age is going to time is going to move on your age is going to keep moving up and at some point you're going to start feeling it no matter how much you want to fight against it you're going to start feeling like oh man like this is cool but like not it wasn't like when i was like 20 25 years old or even you know going back to like maybe like from 15 to like 30 you know what i mean and it's funny because he says from 2000 to 2015 that's the 15 year era mm-hmm. you know what i mean <laughs> 15 from 15 to 30 when that music in that block of time is your grills that that everything is going to be fired to you. you know what i mean um there there's there's definitely the conversation could definitely go deeper in terms of like you know um, how the industry changes, you know what I mean? How money changes things, how, you know, uh, metrics change things, how social media has changed things. And we, you know, we, we could, we've had the, a lot of those conversations here at, at the wrap round table. Um, and so there, there's definitely something to be said about like the more time goes on, uh, the, the more the music is going to be, um, you know, become more microwavable in order to, you know, feed the masses as much as they can. You know what I mean? It, tur- it, it goes from being like, you know, like, like like a mom and pop burger shop to a McDonald's. Um, but still in all, there's still going to be that, that feeling of your era always being the best. You know what I mean? I'm always going to feel like the 90s was the best era, was the most organic era, was the era of of the best sound, the best sonics, the best lyricism, the rawness, all of that. You know what I mean? All the way up to like probably like 2005. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean that anything beyond that, I'm going to be I'm going to be shitting on it. So I say all that to say, yeah, you know what I mean? Everybody's going to get to that old head age where they start realizing, you know what I mean? This shit is not hitting the the same way it was hitting before. And if you really, but if you really love it, if you really, really love it, you'll, you'll, you'll stick around. You'll, you'll still find those gems that really make you feel something for the music and for the culture. Team of balance. Are we in the era of the new old head? Yeah, we're here, man. And Safari's definitely on the, he's definitely at the age of an old head. I'm sure he's around our age, you know? Like, Sin summed it up, man. Like, whatever you grew up with, whatever was prime during your age, like, 
I can just see it now, like all the fucking people that's gonna be like 20 years old in the next 20 years. I mean, I'm telling them how great Kobe was, and they're like, oh no, this new guy is this, and like people before that, no, LeBron is this. It's, Anthony Edwards. You know what I'm saying? It's it's what you watch. Like to me, like if you watch Jordan, you just know like that that ability to win outside of Kobe has never really been duplicated in my eyes. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I've never seen a guy who like will die on the court to win. Prior to Jordan, and then I seen it again with Kobe. So it's it's really what you see, what you grew up with. Like Safari, like at our age, he's been there for a lot of good shit, and he could be talking about rap. I mean, even if you go to the dance hall vibes, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the dot guys doing their thing today, like the pop cons and the what's my son name? Um, damn, Chronics. I love Chronics. You know what I'm saying? Those guys. But when you think about the Elephant Man's, the Beanies, Spraga, the the, the Frisco kids. Spraga Benz, you think of like the, the old school, you know what I'm saying? Wayne Wonder, Cable all the classic to, niggas, yeah. Rick Rock. It just makes you go, damn, like there's nothing that these guys, it's not these guys aren't doing amazing shit. Right. But I was just, I was flooded with everyone doing amazing. Like, I feel like today, a lot of people are doing amazing shit. But I feel like back in the culture, like just more people had to do amazing shit to stand out. There wasn't as many avenues for you to stand out. It wasn't just so dope production or just dope lyrics. It was the combination of all those things together. And I think, like, when you, like, that, Kendrick is that for the Nas heads, you know what I'm saying? Like, the people that listened to Nas back then, fuck with Kendrick today, like us. You know what I'm saying? In that sense. So I get it, man, but... You're us? I, I don't fuck with Kendrick. <laughs> in, in that sense, yeah, I, I, I have been known, I will shit <laughs> on a nigga liar, if I have bro. to, what but is you, lies, we man. just talked about good kid. I just gave it a classic what fucking rating. Fuck? You know what I'm saying? It's a great album. Just It's, it's just... The fuck are you we talking love about? We love what we love, man. So I, I get it. I, like us. I, yo, I, I didn't just... I didn't Give it a classic rating. It's a classic album. I will not. The last shit was trash, but this shit it was a classic Damn album. You know what I'm saying? Guy. Damn, fire album. He's he's made great music. What I I get when niggas come from. You love what you love, bro. That's I leave it at that. You love what you I, don't look at me like that, job man. You love what you love, man. Good yo, music. you said it, Diddy. I'm just yo, watching. Yo, I shit I've shit on. Everyone in the world, but I give credit where it's due. Like he's he's done amazing. That's what things. I, that's what sent me when he say y'all niggas can't duplicate this shit because I ain't saying we're <laughs> slick as a nigga. You do, nigga. Like yeah, and yeah, he do exactly what I meant. <laughs> Job looking at me like this, <laughs> setting the whole tone up. It's what we do here, y'all. See Job, and it's I what was we like... off the side eye, nigga, off the off the glass. <laughs> <laughs> This is the conversations we have, man. This thing is a liar. <laughs> Yo, lower, no lower K, hold up. Lowercase U, capital S. Yo, wow. <laughs> now I'm capping. I'm capping, gang. My nigga, you just spent the last month killing Kendrick, bro. Smoking him. Smoking on his top five. <laughs> Smoking him. Yo. But credit is due where it's due. Oh, man. <laughs> it's what it is. <laughs> it is I'm what so it dying, is. bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're not like us, bro. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> Yo, face, where you at, bro? He's <laughs> talking to you, Dean. Every time Yo. Kendrick come up with this nigga mention five years, now he's like us. Yo, it's, it's been a while. <laughs> my nigga, five years is a long time. Yo, Dean, you Niggas got Niggas graduating in five years. You're Four right. years. Oh, man. The super senior program. I already exactly. know. Exactly. Even a nigga who's a little behind got him. Oh, got man. Me. That shit brought tears to my eyes, up. my nigga. Word two, bro. Yo, it is what it is. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> he, he almost got that off. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> I was gonna let yeah. it go too. I was, I was looking like, at nah, him. Huh? He ain't gonna let it go. Ah oh, man, S- sit for the win, bro. <laughs> sit for the win. Ah uh, nah, but um, <laughs> what the craziest part of this shit for me is when did twenty twenty when did two thousand and twenty fifteen become grail? <laughs> Where was I when that happened? Because <clears throat> a lot of whack shit happened in like 04, 05. 06, 07. Yeah. But, but he, he was outside during that time. A lot time. of whack yeah. shit happened. He was, out, he was outside during that time. So that's I guess he's counting we're himself. From, we're from, a, a, you know, a previous. What, how old is Safari? He got to be our age, bro. He, he got to be closer to the Nikki age, which means he's closer to our age. Yeah, he got to be 40 at least. Oh, that's crazy. So at then least. he, nah, he should, he should. But I mean, go, go, look, no disrespect, but going by his music, the music that he <laughs> tries to make, um, <laughs> I could Sheesh. see it. I could see how that that's the era that he would gravitate to. You know what I mean? Because, you know, yeah, there was a lot of bullshit during that time. Mm. I don't... Anyway. I think, um, I think 09, it, it kind of got popping. He's 41. Shout out to Walt in the Cut. 
So you said 47? 42. Oh. 40. Oh, 42. Copy, copy. I, I would say, oh, nah, shit kind of got popping when this current class came in, yeah. like the Drakes and the Kendricks of the world. Nikki. Even Cole, Nikki, Wayne, towards the end of his, his, his mega run. A lot of niggas started to get popping around that time. So I could, I would say, oh, nine to 15, I grant you that. You know what I mean? But like, the mid order's a dark time for rap, bro. I mean, you had T.I. It was a dark, T.I. was fire. Rose was fire, but it was oh, a six. lot of whack shit. It was a lot of whack. It shit. was. I, 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 I think. Was. I think the the, the snap music era definitely yeah. sticks out mm -hmm. during that time. You know what I mean? And the mm -hmm. the, um, the ringtone music that definitely sticks out. The hyphy but, I mean, niggas in Cali. But but <laughs> I mean, but that was the era of of Kanye. That was the era of Fifty. You know what I mean? Ti, yeah. Luda, a lot of dance yeah. music. Um, you know what I mean? Wayne, which. You're, you're talking to three non-Wayne fans, honestly. Fair enough. Yeah. Real, but like, you got you got to give the flowers where they do. You know what I mean? Wayne, that was Wayne's that era. Crazy run. Um, so yeah, I mean, I could again, I could see you. You could go to any era and be like, yo, there was, there was some fire shit. There was also some bullshit. That's every era. Every era. Fair enough. You know what I mean? So Fair some eras just a little more than others. Though. Yeah. To, yeah. to put the cherry on top of this segment, yes, yeah, Safari's not wrong though. The current era, is, there's a lot. I would say that the the ratio, the chart, there's way more whack now than good shit. So Safari's not wrong in that. Respect. If you was to say, I would start my uh, somewhere in my day, I would say Safari's not wrong. I would be like, no way. <laughs> hey, well, you know, it welcome happens. to the rap round table. You know what I mean? It happens. Anything is on the table. <laughs> Next segment, we got Fifty Cent. News comes out that Netflix is the number one bidder for the Diddy documentary that he has coming out. Um, I the first thing that puzzles me is why is Fifty Cent behind any Diddy related news, bro? I th How did he? If this whole time, I thought he was joking. Right. I seriously thought, oh, he's just trolling Diddy. Like every time he brought up, like you know what I mean? Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have this documentary, and you know following everything that he, that, that's transpired with him. I thought he was just, you know, being usual 50 Cent trolling and mm -hmm. shit. Turns out he really hated him. Why does he hate mm -hmm. Diddy so bad? I what did he do to 50? And, and, it, and it's it's weird because, like, I mean, obviously, we've had documentaries come out in the past um, about, you know, allegations and these kind of stories. But it was always somebody that was not... In the circle, you know what I mean, or in the, you know what I mean. It wasn't, it wasn't another rapper, right. it wasn't another artist. It mm. was somebody like a third party. It's, I do find it a little weird to have Fifty Cent and with with his persona and the 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 image that he portrays, uh, create a documentary about another rapper, about another artist or producer or whatever you want to name Diddy. Um, it does give off. I don't know. It feels a little weird. I don't know. Uh, hit me out. Yeah, chat. Hit me out. You know, it kind of, it kind of gives a little snitchy kind of vibes. Like, how come no one's calling Fifty a snitch? Not a street nigga no more. Like, is he kind of telling on Puff? Not saying that we defended Puff because we not. Right. Everything he's done, egregious, disgusting. We're not a fan of it. But just based on Fifty's energy and his history and this shit. How come everyone's giving 50 a pass? Is it because they hate Diddy so much that they want to see Diddy was it, get what he deserves? Wasn't it one of the documents that um 50's baby mom was like one of like Diddy's little little joints? Like her and like young Miami. They were oh. on the payroll as being like his one of his little joints, 50's really? BM. Really? You know what I'm saying? So that's if that's not enough smoke. Oh, to, the one he just broke up with. The one with the, the little Asian looking. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like I might have to read that out. I don't know if we have to or not, but either way, oh all right, Asian copy. Is the cool, word, just in case. You did right, but um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit correctness. You got to be racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, <laughs> you didn't say anything that started with a ch. Copy. You copy. didn't do the eyes or anything. Nothing so crazy. You're good. Nothing crazy. But yeah, like that. That would be enough to set a nigga like on fire, you know. But like, do I call it snitching? I'm. <laughs> I mean, 50 not really a street nigga no more. Kind of civilian, more of an active filmmaker, TV producer nigga. So he's kind of more like a document. I mean, at this point, is Gail King a snitch? You get what I'm saying? He's kind of like heading towards Gail that kind King of... King is a journalist. But that's, yeah. that's what he's heading towards now. With this, with this, this is a multi... 
It's a multi-episode documentary. Mm-hmm. This is not just like a one-time thing. And you know, this case is ongoing. Right. So more things that happen will be documented in this thing. I can't say snitching because I don't know if he has information that like like the, the people that powers that be don't have. You get what I'm saying? Right. But he, here's my thing. It's not at, cool. At, the, at this point, right. it's like pick a path. But considering pick who one he, persona or the other persona. Because like he's gonna do this and then go on stage and perform songs. I stay G You know yeah, what I mean? mean? You right. But portraying, I, portraying a lifestyle maybe, where this would be frowned upon. May, maybe beating up joints would be like where I would pull the you know what I'm saying? Where yeah, I would right. just allow yeah, it. That's, that's very true. Maybe I'll just allow yeah. like, you know, telling a nigga fifty. You know what I'm saying? I see like, the vision. i I was just curious because again, Diddy Diddy's live a lifestyle to where prior to everything hitting the fan where he was kinda Teflon. But it's just like, yo, 50 been saying this shit for years. 50 been saying what we knew quietly Did for he? years. Did he not? <laughs> Even the shit he doing with Hove is like, the, now at this point, if he's doing a documentary on Diddy, now I got to look at Jay-Z sideways. Like, because he calling Hove out. Mm, yeah. Like, what do you know about Jay-Z, Curtis? Mm. You know what I mean? Because it's like, you've been everything you said about Puff is hitting the fan. Yeah. And Hove has been very quiet. Hove has gone inside while Puff has been getting, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing up the diamond. Deal with it, nigga. Throwing up the diamond up. You know what I mean? The diamond is safe until the allegations happen. Shit. The minute the allegations happen and then you say Hove beat up some lady. Damn. Honestly, if that's the case, we already know Hove got beat up by, by Solange. How can we not, def- why are we not protecting Jay? That's domestic <laughs> violence, ain't Jacob it? Man. Your wife's sister beat you up. That's domestic violence. Why we ain't protected that nigga? That's a fact. And she put hands and mitts on that man. Facts. <laughs> Woo. So that being said, until any allegations come out against Jay, he's safe in my eyes. But if, if Jay's out here being a woman beater, we don't sanction I don't give a fuck who you are or how good your music is. If you beat women or you do some egregious shit allow it, bro. Or, you, or you do the other thing with, that involves, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> we, don't, we don't do that here. We don't like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But as of right now, I just found it interesting that 50 has not been called a snitch by any known street nigga or even somebody in the comment section. They've sanctioned everything up until this point. And I just thought it was interesting, y'all. I'm sorry. I because it feels like he's snitching. When when you can commit an atrocity if the atrocity is committed against someone that nobody likes. Right. You get what I'm saying? So you can be the snitch if you're snitching on someone that everyone right. doesn't like. Things yeah. just tend to get allowed that way. The enemy of my enemy, essentially. Essentially. Uh, okay, okay. Fair enough. Rhapsody put out an album recently. The heads are saying that this is the necessary palate cleanse that the culture needs. They've been asking the rap round table, like, yo, what y'all think about that Rhapsody? Y'all done talked about Kendrick and, and Drake so much. Shit, yeah, 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 yeah. Talk about all these other ladies in the culture. Why are we not talking about good old Rhapsody? <laughs> so to say the rap's not. Rhapsody's yeah. out. She's back outside. She Fine. did her rollout. The album is here. What are your thoughts and takeaways from this new project from rap? Um, I like the album. Okay. I like the project. Uh, it's a little long. Uh, it's 24, 22. 22 mm-hmm. songs. 22 songs in 2024. You're asking a lot, man. Mm. Love you, but you're asking a lot. It is a lot. Um, you know, well over an hour long. Uh, that's not bad. Twenty two songs, an hour and five, five minutes. Not too bad. But you know, today's attention span is kind of rough. You're right. I mean, it, look, I'm I'm gonna be honest. Even back in the day, over twenty songs, you was already a asking a lot back in the day. The difference you know is mean? that twenty songs would have been like a hundred, like, tw- like an hour, and like thirty yeah. minutes. Well, that's so. true. That's true too. But like, you know, what I mean, I I, I would have. I always thought like 12 to 14, maybe up to 16 songs was like mm. the sweet spot. When you're approaching 20 and above, like cut, cut that shit. Trim the fat. <laughs> Trim the fat, for real. Um, but anyway, back to the, the Rhapsody album. Um, I, I like the album. I I don't love it. I'll just get that out of the way. I uh, Some people have been throwing around, not, not, not the C word, right? Not classic, but maybe album of the year. Um, it's still it's way too early to tell with that, but um, it's 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 a good project. I, I like the fact that she went a little bit more personal on this album, uh, but she also chose to uh, experiment a little bit sonically, and and you know bounce wise, vibe wise, flow wise. Um, there, there were a couple of interesting uh, beat choices uh, on the album, and. 
You know what I mean? That, that, Sounds like you don't love us, huh? Well, so <laughs> I, I, I think he, here's, here's my ultimate takeaway. I like the fact that she went personal on some of the songs, but she's Rhapsody's not great at emoting, in my opinion. Oh. You know what I mean? She's not she's not great at really evoking the emotions that she's trying to portray oh. through her rap. So she could write well and and rap well, but in terms of like those songs where she was trying to get super like emotional and personal with it, I, it, it wasn't really connected. Where I, I did feel connected with her on uh, was the, the songs where she was really rapping, rapping. Like Black Pop Star, you know what I mean? She, she rapped her ass off on that. Um, there was one other one. Um, can't remember it right now. Uh, there was Raw. She she went off, but then Lil Wayne kind of snapped on it, kind of outshined her. Um, but there were several songs where she was like in her rapping, rapping back. Oh, actually, in, in I think the song is called "In My uh, Back in My Bag." Fire. Back in my bag was super fire. You know what I mean? So, I if it's me, I hope that Rhapsody focuses on claiming her spot as the best rapper rapper lyricist in the game in, in in that field right you know in in, in the right. female field you know what i mean um again I, I love i love when artists get personal but like it didn't quite connect with me i thought it was good i didn't think it was great i didn't love it. didn't need a balance what you gotta say i really 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 like this album yeah of course <laughs> oh wow like really <laughs> Really, really like this album. I I press play. I always go into every album as, as far as like with the with the fresh play. I don't. This is gonna be fire. It's gonna be whack. I just let me just see how it goes. So I cut it on. And I mean, from track one through six, we had a vibe. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? We had a tone set that that carried me a nice way through. Um, she's expecting with the with, Fel with the legendary Felicia Rashad Matrix vibes talking to the Oracle. I thought that was like. Super fire, you know what I'm saying? The um the Marlena, the Asteroid drink with Hit Boy on the production. Thought that was fire. You know what I'm saying? Look what you've done, D D. And then into the um Black Pop Star joint, the one you mentioned. Yeah. Fire. fire. One through six. Then she goes with the stand tall joint. Which is which is a nice, you know what I'm saying? Good vibe. And after that, it's that one time, 3 a.m. with Erica Badu and Loose Rocks, where we get the soul tree deep. You know what I'm saying? Like the Neo Soul. Like sort of Bruh, like that part of the album was that nice yeah. section in between was fire to me. And after that, we go into the pool of but man, I am building my youth. <laughs> she went straight reggae vibes after yeah, that. That's never the um enough, he shot me. never enough. Yeah, um, he shot me in God's light. Yeah. And after that, back in my bag was the banger in between the separated again. And we rolled the rest of the album out with vibes, sultriness, and introspection. I was very happy, bro. Job that's the bottle. I was very happy, bro. Which one like, you want? Both, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like she, she was rapping, rapping. The bars didn't fail. There was all types of pockets. She was giving me whole vibes. There was like Southern Killer Mike vibes. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, like this is one of the better albums I heard of the year. But like, if I take it just as far as from a lady, it's probably the best like lady album I've heard like in like a really long time. Like maybe years. Mm. This album is fire to me. Like <laughs> she got know. one it's, to me. I, my thing is like I, I think back on Eve. Fire. Yeah. Like I, I, I think like I like Eve. this more than Eve though. No, I think I like Eve more than Eve. I, I can tell. Yeah. You re you really fucked with Eve. Yeah. But this I'm she she did it, bro. She she matched she matched the Sonics. The production was tight. There's all different types of like levels. I thought she did a good maybe evoking is not the word, but I thought she conveyed her emotions mm. pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Got a point across all the joints about the cheating joints. I'm like, yeah. what's going on in rap life? <laughs> Who you fucking with like uh -huh. this? Like it, it, I, it the album really had me thinking like this is this is Real she didn't quick. have to hoe out she didn't have to what? pussy rap what did you do well she did have one I, you know what i mean i mean well, she didn't well, sell a you, pussy no rap. no what did you think about lonely women the, i liked the one, it the one where she she was like masturbating basically i liked it uh, all right <laughs> i have to say to my central i liked it you yeah, know i thought saying? i thought it was a little a little, little too forced. much for you i thought i thought it was a little forced i i feel like she's pushing boundaries at this i can't you either going to take the I, journey. I know, right. I know. Again, I took I, the journey. Yeah, I, I, I like that. It might have been a bit much. She's, <laughs> she's getting out of her comfort zone. Right. You know what I mean? I love it. I appreciate it. that. But 
But Shout out to you, Rap. It didn't all land for me. Here's what I'll say. Still. Talk to me, Joe. The first thing that I, I want to get into with this project is, you know, the 22 songs of it all. I think this is because rap and a lot of artists, not just rap, not singling her out, run into this issue where they want to do, they want to be who they want to be as auteurs, creators of, of culture, creators of music. But then at the same time, the way the sonics of hip hop is going, you can't ignore it. And I felt like rap kind of fell into that trap at this project where she wanted to both be on brand Rhapsody, the brand name, while at the same time get some of these streams. Yeah. Because this is not she signed to what is this called here? Jamla Records are the exclusive license to Rock Nation. Which means she's beholden to a record label who she owes money to. And you if you indie, you could do what you want to do for the most part. Or if you sign a favorable deal like a Griselda did, you can do what you want to do Control. for the most part. When you sign to these people and they and they make the investment in you, I, she hasn't gotten many placements, but I would say Rock Nation's done a decent job of getting her face in the necessary areas. You can't just do what you want to do and then hope the streams run up. I'm not saying Rhapsody doesn't have fans, but she's still, a, a, I would say, a burgeoning artist when it comes to the scale of her fan base. So she has to take these sonic kind of risks that might not be who she is in order to get those streams. And I think this album immediately suffers from that because it's not Eve where it was a, a clear creative direction, both lyrically and sonically. This is who she was as an artist. This is the this is the Rhapsody experience. This right here is, I'm not saying she's throwing things at the wall, but she was definitely trying some shit to get maybe one of these joints to trend and it'll stream and then you'll come and you'll go back and do the, do the knowledge with the back catalog. But none of these songs are that. On, on a positive note, I'll say because there's so much my pussy will do this and my pussy will make you do that. And so much women start their bar with my, literally my pussy. <laughs> Lotto, Lotto is a pussy rap champion right now. <laughs> and, and again, it's like, yeah, I see. In, this, in this climate, because of, of like debate culture and everything, we'll talk about the pussy raps and they'll immediately try to put us in a box, say we hate our moms and we don't really love the music. And it's like, it's not even about that. Like we really love rap. And again, we always use pussy rap now as to what coke rap was then. Right. You know, we understood that at a certain point we can we can do only built for Cuban links a bunch of times, but we do need, you know, a blueprint or or, or what Common was doing, Balance. or what a Wu might do that outside of the coke bars, shit like that. You need balance. You 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 need a Nostradamus, where it's a little sprinkling of everything that made Nas who he was up until that point. It can't just be mafioso and fake Italian names. You gotta, you gotta have some dexterity. Shit, Busta Rhymes. Even though we don't love Busta Rhymes like that, but he tried to give you something different. You know what I'm saying? I got you, <laughs> Sam. To me, she falls in a tough spot because the rest of her contemporaries are selling sex. Mm -hmm. At that, again, there's mad female rappers, women rappers. I mean, I say female because I feel like females become so negative yeah. in this era, and I don't want Ladies. my words to be construed. There's so many ladies rhyming right now who do what Rhapsody does, but they don't have the light that Rhapsody does. As far as like industry status, she's the number one in that yeah. in that lane. But on the, on the opposite side of that, you have your Megan Thee Stallions, Cardi B's, Lottos, City Girls, Nicki. They all rapping about some put fucking uh, Ice Spice. Ice Spice in our group chat, niggas are talking about she might have a, a shit fetish. I'm just saying, <laughs> there's just so much sex being rapped about. That I I she's a human being. She has to feel some kind of pressure. She being rhapsody to feel like, you know, I, I gotta do something else. I can't just give niggas bars. You know what I mean? Right. I disagree. I think she should have just gave niggas Eve too. Like to me, be, be zag when they zig. Create your own subculture. Oh, right. they selling pussy. I'm just gonna wrap my ass off and be one of the best and dare one of these niggas to say I'm not the best. Well, he, here's where that might be problematic Talk because me. I feel like in 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 that lane mm -hmm. I feel like there needs to be like or everybody's looking for some a certain amount of solidarity between right. all of the women right mm -hmm. and if you because look we we just talked about how Lauren Hill got uh miseducation Lauren Hill got crowned the best album 
of all time, not just rap or hip hop, but of all time. She is super self-righteous on that album. Mm -hmm. She is very much on her pedestal on that album. She's very much, you know, like wagging her finger at a lot of what's going on out there, especially at that time in in the in the women rap space. You know what I mean? With Kim and Fox and everybody else. You know what I mean? Um, and she was very much about planning that flag for herself and being like, I'm not doing that. I'm doing this. And she was very successful with that. Um, not not just critically, but also, you know, commercially. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I feel like today, there, like, I think with women, there, there needs to be a sense of camaraderie between them where you can't be talking shit about what those women over there are doing because mm -hmm. we're all women. We're all in the mm -hmm. same game. You know what I mean? And also, we got to say, what Laura Hill did with the miseducation was some extraterrestrial shit. <laughs> no question. She, and we've learned that most people who have a certain type of gift as far as creative goes, they're not the same as us. They're a little touched. They're a little different. And history has shown that Laura Hill is mm -hmm. very different. In order to, to reach that height that she reached, considering what she was going through in her personal life, to make that album. Yeah, yeah. deep shit. I don't, I don't know if Rhapsody has it in there, but I love Asteroid. Shout out Hit Boy. I think that yeah. song is tough. Fire. Marlene is tough. She's expecting it's tough. My, my favorite joint on there, of course, is 3 a.m. of Badu, an, another that extraterrestrial. Yeah. You know, I agree with Sin. I, um, I think that she struggles with emoting, but I don't think she can. That's just not her nature. She's... She's not a charismatic person naturally. When she, even when she does her interviews, charisma's not her bag. Right. The people who are good at emoting are the people who are charismatic. Right. She's a person who has a specific lane that she, as a person, as a rapper. Who she is as a person is who she is as a rapper. Yeah. So, but, but when you take these chances, you know, he shot me, God's like, you, you, you kind of have to have a certain kind of personality mm -hmm. to pull well, these songs I off. I, I, I respect the creativity of it. But much like we, but people didn't understand when we when we said that Kendrick beat Drake, it's not about just the lyrics; it's about the execution. You can have the best bars ever, but if you don't deliver it right, not saying she did, or you didn't execute it right, that's what I'm saying. She didn't do. It's not gonna hit how it was supposed to hit. And if you're telling me I gotta listen to 22 of these, <laughs> even if it's an hour, 22 songs is a, a lot, lot in this man. climate. It is. You have to have a certain level of charisma and and, and personality to sell me on the different sides of you. I like Lonely Woman because, again, Lotto dropped the record, or there was a snippet I seen on Twitter recently, where again she said, my pussy would make you spend this much money and, and make your toes curl and this and that. I love pussy rap like the next person does. I think Lotto is fucking attractive. We love Megan Thee Stallion had the rap round table. You know what I mean? We love these women. We know they fire. These women came to us in the street and they Beautiful gave ladies. us. They said, yo, we want you. We're we not going to front. We're not going to say we don't like your music. We're going to say yes. Yes. Oh, you want me to get in your limo? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. No, Megan. Nah. We joking about the WNBA <laughs> on Twitter. Niggas say we, they can't wait to be flued out nah, by nah, WNBA nah, nah, player. Nah, nah, yes, we will. No, for, first you got to rap about the socioeconomic <laughs> status Fuck that. and state of the country. You don't give a <laughs> shit. Oh, man. <laughs> you don't care. Cut the check. <laughs> I, I'm saying that because I needed to be clear that like we're still men at the end, end of, the, of day. the day. Separate the music critiques aside. We're still men. These women are fucking gorgeous and we don't give a fuck. But if you, if you ask us to critique the music, it does get monotonous when you're telling me how immaculate your pussy is. And as a listener, I can't do nothing with that. Like, how much times you can tell me your pussy's fire? I can't experience it. You know what I mean? Give me something else. So when I hear a lonely woman, it's like, all right, she's rapping about her pussy. In but she's doing way. it in such no, a dynamic yeah, and creative yeah, way yeah, yeah, yeah. that I got to give her the points. Yeah. If, if Lotto I got creative you. about her pussy raps, I might not might be saying be, this right now. Might be interested. Now. You know what I'm saying? Might be interested. To me, this was a flex. By rap. She said, all oh, you niggas is just telling me how much you can fuck a nigga. I'm going to show you bitches how to rap about pussy and make that shit art. That's how mm. I felt about the album. I feel like she just got out of her comfort zone. I got, And I had to appreciate that. And I respect that because, again, this, this the sonics of this current climate makes it difficult for you to just lean in one bag. Because even still, we talk about it and uh, people will call us hypocrites. So I'll put it on wax. We love Griselda. 
well, even now we're saying Conway should try some different shit. Yes. Benny should try some different shit. We haven't said it about Wes because Wes is perfected what he does. And I'm not sure if the shit that we want Conway and Benny to do, we want Wes to do. Right. But we've definitely said that we want niggas to try some different shit. And this is what Rhapsody did. She tried some different shit. Indeed. So that being said, I like the album. I don't love it, but I like the album because as a creative, she tried some shit. She flexed the creativity. She flexed the lyricism. She needs to work on her personality. But this album is tough. What I'll ask listeners it's tough to ask. You get to work on your personality. That's, that's, like, that's a crazy that age, age. No, like, personality that's... within the bars. Like, if you're going to try to, to do this, yeah. you need to learn how to, like, emote, emote it yeah. right. better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of niggas, people jump out the window, they listen, they be like, oh, it's a classic. Like, stop doing that. Let yeah. these albums marinate before you just start throwing classic on every everything drops there is a classic. And there's always a person in the, in the fan base, an artist drop is a classic. No, Give it's it not. Time. Let it touch your breathe. And also, and, and, and I think as soon as, as soon as some listeners uh, hear a certain production aesthetic, mm-hmm. or uh, the artist Speak gets for yourself, saying because you do it too. Wait, <laughs> or an artist gets personal and introspective. You know what I mean? It's automatically his D classic and five mics and yeah. album of the year. And that's not necessarily the case. You know what I mean? Like that that's it's amazing. That's that's exactly what I asked for. You know what I mean? I want more of this. This is what I like. But also, <laughs> but also, like the execution of it does matter. And I think a lot of people will uh, you know, just sort of gloss over any sort of like, you know, critiques and execution just to get flowers for the attempt and for, you know what I mean, the aesthetic that they're looking for. We all do that as humans. Overall, I like the album. I don't love it. Same. I like the album. I like it. I don't I like, like it. It's a I like it a lot. I don't think it's album of the year, but it's it's a great addition to what's been a strong year for music in 2024. There's definitely yeah. quite a few songs I will be going back to, though. I will acknowledge Straight that like definitely. That. There's at least four or five drinks that will be in rotation. And again, let's make it clear since some people struggle with that. We have the right to change our mind. Yes. <laughs> if, if in a few months or a few weeks we keep listening, and It'll we decide better. to say that this album is actually better than I thought it was. We reserve the right to do that because some people struggle with that. Oh, you said on episode eighty four that it was, it was fire. <laughs> so when episode eighty four dropped, several drop, listens after after eighty four dropped, we didn't listen to it anymore. <laughs> we didn't fall in love with it more. We didn't like it less. You know what I mean? Let, let's uh end on, end on a positive note and go through some favorites. Mm-hmm. Yes, I mean for me, Asteroids definitely, and I, I'd heard that a while ago, produced by Hit Boy Shots to Hit. You know what I mean? Uh, Black pop star. Again, I was not expecting that vibe from Rhapsody. But she showed out on that joint. She skates all over that that, that beat. Uh, 3 a.m. with Erica Badu. Chef's Kiss. Um, I I like the the reggae-inspired joints. He Mm -hmm. shot me never enough. Back in my bag, she goes the fuck off. Um... Raw, but you know what I mean? I, I I do feel that she got outshined by Wayne. Shout out to Wayne. Got to give him his props. He's been doing that lately. <laughs> yeah, he's been doing a lot of that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of strong joints on this album. But again, you know, 22 songs long. I, that, that was already, like, kind of a problem. Yeah. Copy. I'm in, I'm in lockstep with you. Also, God's Light, Tough, Raw with Wayne, Give Wayne to Flowers. I like the record. What I will say, A Battle for Homegirls, I enjoyed that. You know what I mean? Grow- growing up with some women, I understand the dynamic. What I like about this album is, because sometimes maybe my, my thinking is too warped. But when I see a new album drops and I, like, you know, you see, like, a little star. Now it's a dot on Apple Music. Mm-hmm. And it'll be by, like, the first four songs. That means niggas ran up the first four songs and they clicked out. They didn't finish yeah. the album. Mm-hmm. Exactly. The fact that some of the more favorite songs, Raw and Back in My Bag, in are middle. track 15 and track yeah. 17, yeah. that means that the people who tapped in the rap fucked this album and they, and they played it through yeah. and they made the decision. No, maybe not the Wayne song because Wayne is a megastar. But like Back in My Bag That's being, really a fire-ass song, bro. Like, Back yeah. in My Bag being track 15 and it has that star next to it, that means niggas listen. Yeah. You know what I mean? So credit Wiz do. I like that she's on Rock Nation because even if you don't like Jay-Z, Rock Nation is a powerhouse. Still caught, no they question. Put, even though... I'm curious about what the future of Rock Nation is now that the DOJ made that whole thing about a lot. Like they saying that they need to split up Ticketmaster and Live Nation mm-hmm. and, and Rock Nation is a subsidiary mm. of, of, of Live Nation. Too much control. Now man. I want to see how that impacts things. But we know that the reach of Rock Nation is very strong. Heavy. And the artists, 
like Rhapsody, who doesn't make poppy records, needs a machine behind her to get her where she needs to go. So I want to see what this music represents that machine. And I want to see how she kind of cultivates and curates what the next project sounds like to, to kind of master what her new challenge is as far as getting more notoriety. Ascendant, yeah. yeah. But let's get to the mailbag. No May segment today because Mace is, you know, on injury reserve. <laughs> we miss you, nigga. May Come on Cito. back. Pull yeah, up, me. nigga. It ain't the same without you, man. Facts. Facts. We got some women in the chat saying, yo, we, Jarvis said was being too biased. We need Sin to, to argue back. That's like, we need Mace to argue back. So you're missed <laughs> by the listeners. If you, I, you be in the chat, niggas be like, yo, where Mace at? And shit. They want to clown you for, for Drake losing, but they also miss the dynamic that you bring. So and whatever you. you can get back, whatever things work out as far as your schedule in life, whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? Come on back. Pull up, nigga. But, oh, for, but again, he's an injured reserve. There's no quarrels. There's no beef. There's no nothing. It's just life, lives, the things need to happen at certain times. Facts. But the rap round table goes on. To the mailbag, my favorite segment. We have Good Speed, 9914, one of our OGs here at the rap round table. He says, Kendrick and Drake were talking to each other on text during this whole thing. <laughs> Apparently, Kendrick tried to lay ground rules to not go after each other's families. Hence all the talk about warnings towards that on Kendrick's songs. I heard this from Rob Markman. So say the rap snob, you say what? Uh, that's horseshit. Okay. I don't believe it. Um, I I was actually just watching uh, a clip of um, uh, the the interview. I guess it was an interview with uh, Two T's, Shots to Elliot. Uh, and DJ Head and that then that other guy I don't know who that, that other guy yeah, hashtag that other guy sorry <laughs> hashtag that other guy um, but no DJ Head w- was saying that he you know like him and Kendrick are actually like boys they're close and they, they speak uh, and that they you know they were on the phone with each other and Kendrick like was taking this super serious mm-hmm. you know what I mean like he really does not like Drake like Drake was taking it as some type of joke, and Kendrick was like, "Nah, this ain't this ain't just rap shit for me. Like, I have to take I really him down." Don't like, him. like he was like really, really like Adam. vehemently serious, serious about this shit. So I don't believe that that you know any theory of like them secretly texting each other like, "Ha ha ha, we have the audience in a you know uh, in a rapture." Like, no, that's not. I don't see that happening at all. Dina, you say what? Doesn't strike me as a Kendrick vibe. Strikes me as a Drake vibe. <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't strike me as a Kenny vibe. I just can't see him doing that. He's too competitive when it comes to this rap shit. So here's what I'll say to that. Two things, no disrespect, but if it comes from Rob Markman, I'm taking that with a grain of salt <laughs> off the rip. <laughs> off the Secondly, jump. imagine me texting Walt over here about our rap beef, then I call you loud for that laugh that. Like Crazy. I mean, like that <laughs> We're not texting. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm blocking you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like if that's your source, good speed, we love you, but Rob, Rob, I don't know if Rob made it up or if he got it from a bad source, but that's not that. That's, like that's that, 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 that right. legit sounds like a skit. You know what I mean? Like, like yo, let, let's do like a fake rap battle. All right, cool, I'm down. This motherfucker's a pedophile, and then like all of a sudden, like oh, the guy's like, oh. bro, bro, <laughs> you text about like, yo, bro, you love it off. Yeah, that's not what we agreed to. Yo, you didn't warn me ahead of time, like, Facts. yo, you went straight there. <laughs> Uncle Frame, another one of our longtime supporters here, Lock, logs in. He says. Damn, you guys just opened a new segment. The Rap Roundtable Bar Inspection. I didn't know Jarv was so good with the bars, but maybe we have to challenge some of that because they never scrutinize K-Dot's bars, I guess. Kendrick, we hate we hate the bitches you fuck because they confuse themselves with real women. Me, is there anything that I don't know about Rihanna? Is she a he? This is him speaking as himself, Uncle Frank. Drake and Rihanna, <laughs> say you hate the girls I fuck, well, what do you really mean? The best thing K-Dot did in this battle is that he just shoot. He never answered anything. So you say what to that whole thing? I, I don't even, I don't even know what that comment is saying, bro. That's he's saying, mad he's saying that Kendrick just said whatever he needed to say. It, he didn't re- give a fuck about what Drake had to say. Um, I bottles at least. So I, I, I was having a conversation with with Dini about this. I think that. Uh, for for Kendrick to say the things that he said, I think wh- whether whether it's true or not is almost irrelevant to Kendrick. I think Kendrick, somewhere deep down inside, actually believes that there is, if that, that if there's smoke, there's fire. 
So the stuff that he's saying, he's saying as as a warning because he's seen some weird shit in the industry. He's seen some weird shit from Drake, mm-hmm. and so he's like, "Yo, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just say it." And I I feel like um and and I was telling you this like I feel with Kendrick when he makes moves and he makes even you know just making music, um he he has to feel like that there's a greater purpose to the music that he's making and to that that end like going into a rap battle he didn't want to go into a rap battle just for the sake of a rap battle he again i think he believes some of the things that that he's saying about about drake you know what i mean so um i don't think he's saying just to say shit. fair enough and uncle frame like <laughs> i love bars let's be clear but at the same time, it's a four-man podcast, and I don't want to dominate the air time deci- dissecting every bar I ever heard. <laughs> I got the rap snobbers right next to me. He could do that shit. <laughs> Dini could do that shit. Mace could do that shit. I don't need to do that shit unless I feel absolutely necessary like I did with the Drake situation to break it down. But, nigga, like, I'm a fucking rap nerd, too. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> I just I have, a, I have a position to play here, and I play it at the rap round table because, Important. again, when you got a team, a strong team of niggas, you don't got to do everything. You know what I mean? And at the same time, and it, we ain't just meet. We didn't just decide to put some fucking shit together. I've known these niggas for years. Nice. So I already know how they coming, so I don't have and, to do anything. And also, I just thought of another thing. If your point is that um, Drake made, made allegations about Kendrick that Kendrick did not address, but Kendrick made allegations about Drake that Drake did address, who yeah. looks more guilty? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, hello. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Shit. If yeah. I was, then yeah. you know what I mean, okay. Shit. Shit. We have here NK Ematech. He says mm. he was responding to the the whack rapper that you like. Second, who's a, a rapper that you you like to listen to? Well, he's not mediocre by far, but I think he should have been bigger, a lyrical monster, and and not enough talked about. Sticky fingers. If you know, you know. Black trash and a day in the life. Dini, he says the Sticky Fingers deserves more flowers. What do you say? Sticky Fingers was, a, in, in terms of rap, Sticky was all right. You know what I'm saying? He had his run with Onyx. Mm-hmm. He did his thing. But as, as far as, damn, what well, I put Sticky as the, in, in the not as good. I don't, yeah, know, that's, I, I don't know if I would put that's, Sticky that's in that, That's weird, though. bro. Yeah. I, I, would, think, I wouldn't do that. Sticky, look. Sticky, sticky was rapping. <laughs> sticky Finger was an elite lyricist. Let's, let's, let's be real about that. Let, let, let's keep it. 100% a buck. Onyx was cool, but Sticky Fingers was the clear star, By not far. just in yeah, terms of star power, old joint slam but, and shit like that. But lyrically, like I feel like and I might I might get some flack for this, but I feel like the rest of Onyx was kind of like playing a role mm. where Sticky Fingers was like that nigga. You know what I mean? Like 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 official tissue. You know what I mean? So that's crazy. I picked Paper do Cardi. Sticky, he picked fingers. sticky fingers. That's that's evil. Well, that's what bro. he was saying. That's why he made sure he was. He kind of gave a disclaimer. Nah, don't do that to Sticky. He said man. He, he's not mediocre by far, but I think it should have been bigger. That's what he said. Okay. I mean, I mean, right. then put him under underrated. Yeah, right. Or slept on. You know what I mean? Do you need to balance? Stay right there. It's Copy. for you. Mace is not here, so you got to take the heat. Let's go. <laughs> so no, so seven seventy seven says, Dini and Mace. Really need to be yanked off the pod page. <laughs> Absolutely clueless dick riders. So bad, I'll need to unsubscribe. You say what? Wow, bro. That, that's insane. <laughs> that's, that's insane. That's insane. So, so. Wow. Uh, that's, that's. I don't even know how this. <laughs> us dick riders made crazy. you un- want to unsubscribe from the pod, which is maybe the biggest level of mean? dick riding I've ever seen. You know what What's I'm saying? That? So, salute to you, bro. You will not be missed. What's salute that? to you. <laughs> <laughs> Next Listen, question. In solidarity with my bro over here. Yeah. Bye. Any of that? Any of that? Blank. I'm out of here. Shit. And just go, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? We'll see you later, bro. Out of out of four guys, if 25 or 50 percent of them say something that you don't like once, and all of a sudden you gotta go, then you gotta go, bro. And that's the shit. Is like I can't help you, bro. They keep looking for that confirmation bias. It's like, bro, like. The rap round table was never gonna be the pod that 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 follows what everyone else is saying. Mm. We were never gonna say in unanimous or in unison, fuck Drake or fuck Kendrick, regardless of the outcome Facts. of the battle. We're gonna talk about it based on our individual experiences. Even if there is no consensus as a pod, we're gonna give our individual now, we'll takes. And I, I, I'm gonna lift the veil a little bit because 
I know that there's a lot of platforms out there that have to stick to a script. We ain't got no script over ain't here. No script. No script. Yo, <laughs> like a lot of times, like the, remember the, when they the, said we was playing a role, bro? Like <laughs> you know what I mean? We throw the topics out there, and however we it feel is, is, is how we feel. You know what I mean? And then we talk, we talk about it afterwards, and we're like, yo, you might have been bugging. You, you might have <laughs> went too far. Yeah, you know I mean, we got to censor some shit. But like, how, it, the fact that we censoring shit lets you know that we're, we're how we feel is how we feel at this table. Straight you know like that. That's so we have a hundred times square. He says, I haven't listened to this pod in over a month. Two explanation points. If I see the name Drake or Kendrick or Cole or Rick Ross in the title, I keep it moving. Enough is enough already. So I'd like to say this to you off the rip before I speak. <laughs> I don't want peace. I want problems always. No. If you think somehow that the rap round table, one, revolves around you, or two should ignore the biggest story in rap in 20 years because you don't want to hear it, then you, my friend, can get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? And not we're not saying we want you to unsubscribe, but we're saying on this point and this point alone that we should not talk about Drake versus Kendrick and with Cole on the side or Rose on the side because you're tired of it. I got to ask the question, where's it at? You know what I mean? I'm trying to find the drive. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Wow, bro. The biggest rap That's beef crazy, in 20 bro. years. And then... What the fuck are you talking about? Because it's like... Why wouldn't we talk about the biggest battle that we as a podcast, when niggas said it would never happen, we were the only ones saying that it's going to happen. From, the, from episode one, <laughs> from the preclude, when we was doing the shit on the gray area, we always knew this battle would happen. That guy's and, probably and you, mad that we didn't cover the the master ace. And when you come Paulo on, Alvaro, bro, when you look at the when you enough. look at the full fledged like the totalness <laughs> of the whole shit and the arrogance. And no, no disrespect, because I love master ace, I love Marco Polo, but like, look, man. I mean, granted, we are in the microwave ever, but how long has this shit even been going on? This is like a month in. But maybe, we did, but Dini, we, but we did other shit. <laughs> we didn't just cover that. We Mad had other shit. topics in the midst of that. But I'm like, niggas, the, niggas didn't want OJ to talk about, you know, and the new, everything was OJ on the news for like a month straight and fucking Bronco. That's the news, bro. We're covering news. But it's like, imagine us ignoring the biggest story. Rap beef. Other know, shows got podcast. too proud to cover us. And we talked about it enough. And niggas didn't give a fuck. Right? We still talk about the whole biggest story 20, years later. in 20 years and it, that and we predicted five, six years ago. And here we have to talk about. And here's why you have to subscribe to us. And this is why we're the best. Because we are the barometer of what's going on out there. You know what I mean? Pulse. There, there's, there's platforms that'll be like, I right, we'll talk about it once or twice and then leave it alone while more records are coming out. Make and we're not sense. supposed to talk about the extra records. And then, and my other problem with this is like, somehow you feel that like these artists are, uh, you're not deeming them worthy enough to continue to cover. Right. And that speaks to a very just old headish, antiquated way of thinking that like because they're newer artists, you don't care about them, right? But if it, but if it, if it was Nas and Jay Z beefing again. And we spent like ten episodes in a row covering it. That would be cool, Bruh. Because three, that's what y'all want. Three of the disc records were in the top ten billboards, and five of them were in the top twenty. What are we talking about and here, it, and bro? It's not, like, it's, it's not even that. Let's ask it, him it again. Liter it the literally, fuck are you it's it, news. It's major. literally controlled the all fuck of are you social media, about? bro. It was hip hop all the news What's that? For, for fucking weeks. What's that? What's that, brother? Brother. Why the fuck would we not talk about? The rap round table not talk about rap. The biggest story in rap. Nah, but let, let, let's let's uh let's make a list of the top five Wu Tang albums. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, top, the top five Ghostface features. Bro, like shit is the, wicked, bro. And then the arrogance of you to say, oh, I see it, and I scroll past it's like fam. That's why I always remember we talked about it so back in going. October. Yeah. Keep going, Don't bro. Don't be either you fuck with us. And you support us. Don't be fickle about this shit. Because again, y'all play a role in any success that we attain. Major. Press play on that shit. 
hit the like. It ain't like we do two hours talking about Drake versus Kendrick. Even when we talked about Drake versus Kendrick, we'll get at the opening segment, then we'll move on to some other shit. Right. And again, it was it was the top five rapper producer combos. We did the Diddy shit. We did the top five diss records as an example. Mm-hmm. We did a whole bunch of other shit. We talked about Simba Cloud Chasing. We talked about a lot of shit. Most uh, most unskilled rapper who you love. Come you, on, bro. You cover a lot of shit, so bro. So it's like, when you say that, it's like, it, it makes me question, do you fuck with us? Or are you here for us to talk about Nas? Because one, and I, I only mentioned Nas because 100 Times Square is one of, the, one, of, one of those when we was doing basically exclusive, extensive Nas coverage on deck. to the point that people in our real lives, whether it was your man's, who's a, man, Tim, the Barber, Tim the Barber, shout out to my, my homeboy Biz who passed away, rest in peace. They both R. asked, R. like, as this example, like, why I talk about Nas so much? These are things who watch the show. He's moving the culture. At one point, we <laughs> was talking about Nas every episode. We got our plug, Sharon. Shout out to Sharon. Hey, hey, hi, how, how you doing, Sharon? She Salute. teases us to this day. Oh, your favorite rapper's making some news again because she thought we was a Nas platform. So when we was doing the exclusive Nas coverage or the extensive Nas coverage, 100 times good, you was good with it. But the minute some other shit pop off, you, you try to tell us, like, you're not watching because it's not what you want. It's like, that's crazy to me. We will we will report on what the shit what the fuck is going on in the culture. We will be active. Uh, we are the, the the pulse, the barometer, the the, the thermometer, nigga. Like nigga. if you make <laughs> if you making news, we're gonna talk about. We're it. there. When Nas is out to drop the Primo album, you think you're not gonna get four or five bars about Nas and At Primo? Least. You kidding me? If Hove drop, you you gonna get four or five bars about Hove dropping? Anyway, let's end, let's end the bill back on a positive. <laughs> I just the nerve of this guy. I'm just saying because that was the second time he commented that shit. You wanted the attention, you got yeah. it, bro. Did you did you not understand the the gravity of what was going on in the culture when it shut everything down, bro? Like that dropped. People didn't put music out when push ups <laughs> dropped. When Family Matters, Taylor made Meet the Grams, Euphoria dropped. Six sixteen in L.A. Bro. Not the, like us. And, and and it was like, I we expected Drake to do what he was doing. Kendrick is such an elusive figure. We didn't know what the fuck he was going to do. He dropped on a random fucking we Tuesday. We did a pod where we basically said he's not coming back. <laughs> niggas had, niggas on had a random to drop Tuesday. right back. We got a fucking Kendrick sighting and he was fucking f- like flaming everyone. Bro. And when when not supposed to. Low, like not even fuck, high this, key. But look at we, the stats. We've had the best coverage of this entire shit, like on the fucking internet, bro. Outside of maybe Act with his thirsty self, shout out to Act. We've been the biggest coverage. You know much niggas commented and said, "Yo, bro, I found y'all during this beef, and y'all had the best." Matter of fact, there's an Instagram DM right now. Matter of fact, thank you for saying that, Dean. Because he I, even said it. You had the best coverage of this shit. For y'all nah, been bro, there from I'm day a, one. I got another one for you because it was it was it was a request, and, and now that you mentioned it, I'm gonna bring it up. Some positivity. Where, where's that? His name is Derek Matthews. Salute. Today he sent this message. Big fan of you guys. I wanted to say that I appreciate you all for your togetherness and conversations. Over the past two to three months, especially during the Kendrick, Drake beef, and Diddy issues, I've really ha- had to trim a lot of podcasts and voices back because either they were too biased, they broke up, and they sounded nuts doing the subs, the quality wasn't there, and it all sounded performative. Th- thank you mm. all for being authentic. Salute. Thank you for being for giving real updates, even if biased and being honest. I know you, you got busy lives, but thank you for being the inside the envy of hip hop without the industry bias or being compromised. Mace, Jarv, Sin, and Dini. Thank you, because this is what this is what we that's, do it for. That's, that's for love. the motherfuckers with eyes who actually see that. This is just a pod with niggas with opinions. We don't choose a side. We just we call it how we see it. Derek Matthews, salute to you. Dini, he gets sal- it. Salute to you for, for, for reminding me of that shit. Salute. Whether you meant to, you didn't mean to, but you reminded me of that shit. Because like that's what it's all about. They get it, man. Some some people really, really get it. Salute to y'all, man. And last but not least, we have what's his name? Obakeng Stewart, sixty nine seventy three. My niggas are back to realness. I'm back to subscribe, and he loved the segment about uh, the mediocre rappers that we show love to. Because again, salute, brother. We do that type of shit here. Yes. You're not gonna find that nowhere. Right, talk about it, man. We really put in a lot of work for y'all. Like, don't get it twisted. We get at niggas because we love y'all. We want the support. But don't tell us all. Oh, don't I talk t- about this. I, I told y'all what, what what I put myself through for y'all. Come on, man. <laughs> Listen, sexy red. And I yeah. can I, I can see. Come them. on. 
I want, I, yeah. I'm not doing that for my own health. You're asking a I lot. Do that for you. Yo. You're asking a lot. Come on. And I can see now if the stats wasn't like if the numbers was a number him during that peak, we were setting record. We were setting rap round table it. records. Fuck it, man. So Salute obviously niggas fuck with the whole it. fucking chat. Like man. read the room. But anyway, we are uptown. Yes, yes. Since you know what I'm saying? The weather is nice. It was a steady 80 outside today. Soon you'll be in the LES. Soon. Mm. Soon. <laughs> Soon. Right now we're But we still uptown. Still right? Uptown. The weather was nice. I had to run from the street sweeper. <laughs> For some reason, I'm trying to figure out. Now I thought about it. Why the fuck is the street sweeper on Eastern Parkway at like 8 o'clock? Like, Sheesh. those y'all niggas work in the mornings. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we uptown. The weather is nice. The ladies are looking nice. I could, the Dominican spot with the hookahs playing the music and it sounds amazing. <laughs> the short shorts are out. But then there was a vagrant who decided to step on Sincere's freshly watered roses and we mm. need them too. Get off my lawn. Get off Sincere's lawn. Sincere. So, um, there's two people I need to get off my lawn Uh-oh. today. So it's going to be twofold. Okay. No half flowers half. tonight? <laughs> what happened? No flowers? No flowers. Okay. Free smoke. Usually I give out flowers and then I kick somebody off. Yes. Two kickoffs to today. today. <laughs> Nobody gets flowers. Uh, the first person getting kicked off my lawn. This is this will be the, the music aspect. The baby. Oh. Oh wow. What are you doing out there? Oh, <laughs> we forgot about him. <laughs> what are you doing, bro? You know what he's doing. If if if, if, if there was if, if if there was a person that personified, nobody asked for this. Mm. If nobody asked for this was a person, it would be the baby. Right mm. This motherfucker came out with a not like us freestyle. Mm. <sighs> God, man, man, talk about Listen, it. we already cooked Simba for being a cloud chaser. Mm. The baby, you're, you're right there with him, man, because like you, you haven't dropped a single decent song in I don't know how long couple years at least uh you're at your your personal beat selection is so trash like it it just it feels like you go onto youtube and just look for the quickest free beats that are available out there for your actual songs on your projects but now that Kendrick done wiped wow. the landscape clean with Not That's Like Us. crazy. You want to hop on the Not Like Us beat with the same goddamn godforsaken flow that you've attacked every single beat that you've ever been on with. Bro, we're, we're tired. <laughs> we're fucking tired, bro. <laughs> Leave us alone. I'm not going to... St- I don't know, man. I'm not going to say retire, but I'm just saying, like, go away for a while. Like, reconvene with your your own, like, artistic sort of endeavors and come back with something fresh and new, something that that we might actually fuck with. Rhyming that flow on that beat beat But the not like us freestyle. It's criminal, bro. Disgusting. Get the fuck off my lawn with that shit. Mm. Damn. Get off the lawn, Sam? Get all, all the way Get off. off my lawn. And then there's a second lawn. And this one's a little bit more personal. So bear with me. If you see me up here on this platform, at this table, or on the street, and you assume that I am or identify oh, as Uh-oh. one <laughs> of them folks, what are they? sorry, <laughs> Sorry, Walt. <laughs> sorry, Walt. <laughs> sorry, Walt. We love you, bro. Preemptive sorry, Walt. <laughs> but if you think that I am or identify as white, man, if I if I had a hundred lawns, I'd kick you off every last one of them. Get off my lawn. Never in my actual real life has anybody come up to me and assume that I was a white person. I've gotten Dominican. I've gotten kind of Mexican. I've even gotten like Middle Eastern. Probably because of the beat. But I've never in my life said you was hot in, in my real life, I've never gotten white. So said you served chicken so when over people, rice? What, oh, so when, no. <laughs> so when people, 
shit, big. <laughs> so when people see me on streams, when people see me on YouTube, and they assume that because I'm not black that I must be white, white yeah. and that's the only other possible option, you got to get the fuck off of my lawn forever my and lawn. ever, bro. Sing I'm going to address this once. Sing got the best coquito in the city, man. Talk bro, to this I'm going to address Spanish this, this man. once. <laughs> one time and one time. And one man. time only. And if ever, if ever anybody has any more questions about this, I'm going to direct them back to this episode. <laughs> and I'm going to place this, the timestamp. Nah, eight. Mm -hmm. My father was Puerto Rican. My mother was Salvadorian. Right? Or Salvadorian. Now, this one particular person... Once they got this information in the comments, was like, oh, but the Spaniards conquered all of those lands. Oh. So by proxy, he's... Bro, are you not aware of the indigenous people that were there before? Like, you, you think that because you see me up here through a camera on YouTube or through a live stream that you have... You... You have my 23 and me information. You've done your your whole <laughs> ancestry. You, you've had you've done my whole DNA ancestry for me because you 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 see me. You you have you have issues, bro. You got to get the fuck up off my lawn forever and a day. Don't you don't ever talk lawn. to me. Don't ever approach this subject ever again. Matter of fact, if you need to go, if you need to uns unsubscribe, fucking unsubscribe. Yeah. I will block you, my goddamn self, if I ever see you in my comments again, bro. That is some clown ass shit. Bro. My brother. Get the entire fuck <laughs> off my lawn. If you think the fuck out of here is white, we got a question for you. What's that? What's that, brother? And then I'm oh. not done. Oh, he's more. Because uh -oh. then he had a problem oh. with me saying our culture. To be clear, when culture, I say culture, our culture, culture wow. I'm talking about hip hop. I am a New Yorkerian who was brought up in New York. I grew up in hip hop. You know what I mean? Oh, one of my shit. first vinyls was Run DMC. One of the, the first songs I memorized as a kid was fucking self destruct I grew up in hip-hop. I have done nothing other than try my absolute best to represent the culture as, as a person that grew up in New York, in the culture, when that since the inception of the shit. You know what I mean? I was born in 1978. Hip-hop was born five years before me. You know what I mean? I have lived this culture. I've repped the culture. I've, I feel one with the culture. You know what I mean? So when I say our culture, I'm not saying black. I'm not saying Puerto Rican. I'm not saying anything. I'm saying hip hop. That's what I'm here for. You know what I mean? You could never pull that card from me. Fuck out of here, bro. And I'll say this. Talk about you know, it. I'm not gonna, usually I do my little thing where, you know, I, I, a couple of extra Add lawns. On. You know what I mean? Add on. <laughs> I'm going to just say this one time. And cook. And like since then, you can reflect back to this episode. If you think, hold up, if you think that myself, Dini, and Mace, who's not here with us tonight, but Mace, would sit here and let some white dude abuse the N word right in front of us on a Crazy. podcast for close to a hundred episodes, Bruh. you can get off my lawn. And I don't even say it like that because I like I, I get it. I get it. You know what I mean? I, I know how y'all have come at Fat Joe. Mm -hmm. I know how y'all have come at people out there. And and honestly, I don't even... I agree with what y'all say. So I, I don't even... I don't be on that. Too. If you haven't done the knowledge and realize that Sin is, uh, is the most self-aware of the four of Talk us. About it. You know what I mean? Then, <laughs> get off my lawn. And again, if you think that we're some Uncle Tom MFers who would just... Embrace some dude as New Yorkers. Calling us niggers. We just let us, you know what I mean, just <laughs> be a racist right in front of us. Get off my lawn. Now, I understand all the do the knowledge and the diaspora talk that you tried in the comment section, but if you think they're coming to the comment section for diaspora arguments and culture talk, it's the place to do it. Get off my lawn. This is the Rap Round Table, episode 98. Go kick boulders, bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> with no shoes on, with sandals on, with your toes out. You know what I mean? Episode 98, another one for the books. Mesito, we miss you. We, we need you back with us as soon as you possibly can. You know what I mean? Roundtable workers on come get you one of these. Get you one of these. Good, good. Dini the balance. Matter of fact, shout out to Walt in the cut. D 
Diddy the balance. Take us home. Super shout out to Walton the Cut. My guy, you know what I'm saying? Always sticking it out to the end, Paul. Shout hey, out to the fans. Yo, preemptive what? pause. Preemptive Stick pause. It preemptive out. pause. What? what? Preemptive pause. The pause <laughs> gotta be early, y'all. The pause ain't early. It ain't early. Shout out to all the fans. Hit no mods for stick out. <laughs> Shout out to the fans. Hit the like button. Denona Rosa, we on the way for that pizza. Sincere Rap Snob, producer extraordinaire. If you rap, if you really make that shit to move the culture, talk to Sin. He will get yes, you yes. situated. The hardest working man in show business, Jav the point guard. Shout out to Macito, always with us forever. You know what I'm saying? I'm D the Bowser of the Force, a little Smith, a little Driz. But it's the Rap Roundtable, episode 98. We fucking out of here, you dead. Boom! Episode New York Bias 3, episode 100 on the way. Brother. Boom.